minkä päällä lakukastiken maistuu parhaalta. Ei voi tietää, ellei kokeile. Kouvolan lakritsi. Wilhelm vie nakkikioskille kotikatsomossa. Hello everybody and welcome to this presentation of the ECL Elite Division right here on NHL Gamer. My name is Tuki, joined as always by my broadcast partner in one sin for the win. Sin, it is the set, the games that we wait for every single season. It is a very, very big day here for NHL Gamer. We kick things off. It's Havu and Philadelphia. Yeah, I mean, the perennial El Clasico matchup as we have gotten used to calling it and, I mean, almost gotten used to seeing them battling each other out in the championship series. However, last season, Atred's able to get past Havu and make it there. Havu on the revenge tour this season, excited to see what they want to do. And if they want to make a return here, they're going to have to make a statement versus Philadelphia today and get themselves at least a split. If they could somehow 2-0 Philadelphia, that would be massive. That would be absolutely huge with that Philadelphia squad currently undefeated. Of course, a little bit later on in this broadcast as well. It's not our only fixture today. 10th placed Vesa Pampa will take on 13th ranked Northern Ascendancy a little bit later on. So a busy day here as always. As you get a look at the schedule, we also have a pretty big game, all things considered. Yippy Vaskula and Sabo going head to head with Yip. Uh, pretty much underperforming the season, Sin, I think is the best way that we can phrase it. Yeah, I mean, at this point, you know, it's no longer just that slow start. They are, you know, it can't be it can't be ignored anymore. They are significantly underperforming from where we expected them to be and perhaps where they themselves had projected them, you know, to end up. And they're taking on a team like Sawa, who has, has, seems to have the momentum behind them. We, co we covered them a couple days ago where they took on ZSC and, and picked up some important points against them. They really seem to be on the up and up. And as you said, yeah, Yippie Vasla struggling. Then we also have the Rusty Blades against H-Reds, which, I mean, H-Reds just seem to be unconscious here. Tough matchup for Rusty Blades, but they desperately need points. Absolutely. H-Reds are right now third in points per game, of course, behind Philadelphia and Havu so far this season so we'll try to keep an eye on everything going on around the league here today let's get you a quick look at the standings here though as we continue to set the stage for the action that you'll see in this broadcast as you can see there of course there is a bit of a jump in terms of games played as few as eight for Vesa Pampa and as many as 14 for quite a few teams around the league in this 30 game regular season but Sin, right now at least, as it stands, again, there have been some surprises. I mean, obviously, the left-hand side of the bracket is where you want to be. And on the outside right now, surprisingly, Vesa Pampa's not there. Again, few amount of games played. But then Yippy Voskala, Northern Ascendancy, two teams that were playoff teams, currently on the outs looking in. And what about Sawo, currently sitting in fourth? Who saw that coming? I mean, completely impressive. Yeah, you know, the games uh, played so far, it's a bit of discrepancy, but they have that positive record. I mean, eight wins so far, that's really nothing to scoff at. And, you know, they, they seem to be just continuing building on the momentum that they kind of started last season after they underwent some of those, you know, uh, mid-season roster changes. And since then, Sawa has just really been on the up and up. But again, our focus here in this first matchup, the two teams... At the very top, the two teams that you think of when you think of the elite division. It is Philadelphia, currently undefeated at 10 and 0. Havu at 10, 1 and 1. Of course, it was Havu shrugging off what was a bit of a surprising start, dropping one of their first two games against YMCA Esports. They also dropped their fourth game of the season against Vesa Pampa, but they have been undefeated since having rolled over ZSC Esports, Poggers, Kova, and Sawo 
heading into today's matchups, whereas Sin, I mean, I think the numbers speak for themselves when it comes to our reigning and defending champions in Philadelphia. Yeah, absolutely. Firing on all cylinders is the best way to describe them. I mean, it's incredible. Still with that perfect penalty kill as well. But on that topic of Havu, I think, you know, they kind of did what we expected perhaps Yippie Voskala to do. It's like, okay, they got off to a kind of a rougher start, figuring some things out with the new... Uh, roster but yeah you said it after that they've been you know really working their way back up both of these teams honestly very strong defensively however what I'm looking to uh to between these two teams is Havu two extra games played except you know nine less goals for um you know when they're taking on Philadelphia I think that could be a pretty large factor here in this matchup can Havu put up the goals that they need because you know you know the defensive struggle is going to be there but it's really going to come down to who can get the goal at the right time so with that, let's take a look at the lineups for today's action. This home-and-home -home set between Havu and Philadelphia. You see the Philadelphia squad there on the left-hand side of your screen, of course, as always. Pleamaker, the captain, Potsloff, and Eki down the right wing. The defense, of course, Temu and Aloimu. And in goal, it is the Carey Price, some might say, of the elite division. It is Kape. On the other side, of course, for Havu, we see a slight change, and it's one of the big talking points heading into this matchup. Pawanso now centered by Huneli and the captain flyer Kungan on the right-hand side. Jay Toro, of course, who transferred over from Philadelphia for this season, is alongside Nasostelli on defense on Salino between the pipes. And Sim, we get to start things off here with that center battle between Potsloff and Huneli. Again, Dom Anointi. Not in the lineup today for Havu, and that places a lot of pressure on the man for Havu. Again, just two games played out of the 12 so far this season. Yeah, it's, you know, this is this is a big move. I mean, yeah, it's kind of, you know, overshadowing the other talking point that we probably would have thought we had, you know, going into this. You know, obviously, Jay Toro going up against his former team following all the, you know, the, the various fallouts that happen from that roster change. But yeah, I mean, the matchup here, you said it. Hunelli has a lot to prove. I mean, such a small sample size, but in the two games he played, you know, 60% on the draw. He's going to have his work cut out for him against Potsloff, who has been pretty good, perhaps maybe underperforming to his standards with a, you know, 53.3% on the faceoffs, but, you know, no short as a points, 12 goals, 12 assists. And, you know, this is, we're going to really get a look at see and see is Hunelli, you know, a guy that Havu wants to put the saddle on. I mean, again, to you, look at what what he was able to do in his return season to the Elite. Again, a season one original who returned last year in season 11. It was his first appearance since season five. But he certainly didn't look out of place with 51 points in a full 30-game season for Kobe Esports. Again, a bit of a slow start, but definitely one of our featured players today. We move over to the Battle of the Wingers here, of course, for Philadelphia. It is Playmaker and Eki, the dynamic duo, to say the least. Going up against Pawanso and Flyer Kungan. And of course, Sin, I mean, it was another change for that Havu lineup. With Pawanso returning, he sat out last season. Hanselino jumped up from goal. The team did well, crashed and burned in the playoffs. He's back in the lineup, though. 15 goals in 12 games. He hasn't missed a beat. Uh huh, and that seems to be you know a huge presence that they you know, kind of needed in the playoffs on that left wing side. Obviously, Hanselino very good in his own right, but we we have you know had to mention it. He was playing you know that left the, that left hand on that left wing side, which oftentimes you know, in, especially in you know EASHL, people prefer the one time options. And so you got Puanzo back in there, fifteen goals in those twelve games played, absolutely huge. But then of course you're going up against Playmaker and Eki, who are just absolutely killing it when it comes to point totals. I mean, as they always do, we go to the battle of the Blue Liners now. Again, for Philadelphia, it is recent acquisition in Temu alongside Loimu. And, of course, those two more than capable of putting up points. But, of course, you could say the same thing on the other side for Jay Toro doing what he does best. And, Sin, I mean, if we were to have, and it's a harder metric uh, to compare, but if you talk about best defensive defenseman in the league, I think Nasa would top a lot of people's lists. Absolutely. And and so oftentimes we haven't considered him as that because he's gotten, you know, a ton of points throughout the season, uh, you know, in the past this year uh, so far, only seven points. It's kind of interesting to see both of these uh, sides, you know, having lower point totals than one of their defensemen. Something that's always kind of been a talking point for us was that these elite teams have two defensemen who are great at shutting things down, but also can produce a sizable amount of points. Now, it is still relatively er early chance for them to rack up those points. But, it, you know, it is kind of interesting seeing how things will change from season to season. 
season. That being said, this is it. This is Jay Toro returning, facing his, you know, his old team in Philadelphia. And I'm kind of wondering if we'll see, you know, any sort of gamesmanship, any targeting going on back there, especially on the four check. Uh, if they want to, you know, try to put some pressure on him, throw Jay Toro off his game early. And with that, our final head to head, it is the battle of the goaltenders and arguably still the two best that this division has to offer two of the best goaltenders in the world, regardless of what region you might be in. It is Cape against Han Salino, uh, both former faces of a season here in the elite division. And for good reason, Sin, as you look at these numbers, absolutely outstanding. Yeah, this is really as good as it gets when it comes to competitive esports NHL action. I mean, high 80 save percentages. That is crazy. We talk about all the time where you want to kind of be at is around that 80% save percentage mark. These two are shattering that, both with three shutouts apiece. However, Han Salino, four less games played. So you can see Havu's been trying to, you know, shake things up, try a lot of different looks this year so far. And, you know, maybe. Maybe they're just kind of going back to the well here, throwing Hanselino back in there. And how can you argue with those numbers? I don't think you can. Of course, Hanselino splitting time with Sibelius this season between the pipes. No disrespect to one of the fastest men on ice. Uh, but ultimately, uh, Hanselino has been one of uh, the premier goaltenders, of course. And him going back in net this season has worked out tremendously. Sin, with that, we are just a few moments away from puck drop in our first game of two between these two teams. But before that, let's take a look at the keys to success as we always do. And we'll start things off with what it's going to take for Philadelphia here. We'll look at those three keys. And Sin, what do we have here? Well, first one here, I mean, you mentioned it in the lineups. It's the dynamic duo. Playmaker and Eki are the best one-two punch in the league when it comes to wingers. No one else really comes close. I mean, they're, they're the top two point getters right now in the in the elite. And we're, I think we're going to see that you know pace continue throughout the year now. The question is, can they do it against Havu, their biggest rivals? I think they can, but you never know. Sometimes that things can happen. But you know they're going to see that effort come out from the pair of them. The next point here is active defense another big reason for phyllis success over the years has been their willingness to get the defense involved i mean and Tamu is leading defenders in shots despite that lower uh point total he does have you know four goals on the season which is great and loimu of course top six in points i mean every single skater on this team needs to be and likely will be viewed as a major threat and that is really how you are able to spread out defenses and with a you know a tight system that Havu likes to play that will be important the third and final point here is perfection like Carey Price in the playoffs but even better Kape is a perfect 10 and 0 with you know essentially an 87 percent save percentage while allowing less than a goal per game on average he was a playoff MVP for Philadelphia last year for a reason. He broke the shutout record for a reason. And he's on pace to do some even, you know, crazier things this season with those numbers. You mentioned the single season shutout record under the NHL Gamer umbrella. Cape has now tied the record for most shutouts with RPH 76. Will he break the record today? It's a tall task against Havu. It's just a matter of time, though, until he does. With that, let's quickly run through the keys here for Havu. And Sin, I'll go ahead and take this one. And, of course, we already talked about it. The big skates to fill. Dom and out of the lineup at 21 points in 10 games. You saw the numbers for Hunelli so far this season. He has a lot of pressure on his shoulders. Then we talked about the familiar faces where Jay Toro is on the opposite side of Philadelphia for the first time now in a few seasons in the Elite Division. We'll see how that plays out. And then, I mean, one of the best puns we've ever had, I think. Hanselino, my God, because you saw that save percentage. He has been absolutely incredible. Hasn't missed a beat between the pipes. But again, what a task he has in front of him here. Sin, again, the two teams just about ready to go. I mean, you know, expect the unexpected has been the theme between these two teams, and I imagine it's going to continue to be here today. Yeah, I mean, it's who knows what happens, but we know one thing that will happen when the two teams meet uh, is that sparks will fly. It's going to be exciting. It'll be nerve wracking, and it's 
Who knows what the results will be, but we know we're, we're in for some entertaining hockey between these two clubs. And it doesn't matter when these guys play, in what situation, it's going to feel like a playoff game. It, it might even feel like a championship matchup. That's just the level that these guys play at, the drive that they have, and the competitiveness that they all embody and maybe ratchet it up a little bit more because, you know, they're facing an old teammate over there in Jay Toro. They're, you know, really going to want him, you know, for the uh, bragging rights, you know, sh- be able to shut him down and take those wins over his new uh, – uh, well, new old team in Havu Gaming. I have no idea how you just no sold the player pictures for Havu in that lobby. <laughs> <laughs> so you're trying to figure out like what's going on. Jay Toro's not following the theme at all. Oh, goodness, goodness, goodness. Regardless, sin, we are ready to go. Havu, of course, the home team in this one. You see them there. Very excited to see how this plays out again. These two teams have met the finals numerous times. There is always, of course, that regular season matchup where you really start to try and gauge, okay, where exactly do these two teams stand? It is the biggest matchup on paper that we have here in the Elite Division. Philadelphia and Havu game, one of two underway. The playmaker in space misses just wide of the post. A great chance to get shot on deflection and a big stop by Hanselino. Now that is a way to make a statement off the opening draw. Absolutely, trying to maybe catch them nap napping, throwing Pleamaker up that middle, trying to split the D, got a little bit of space, and then the follow-up opportunities, Hanselino having to be sharp early. That play off the draw was knocked down. Fought on for by Potsloff, and again, it's Jay Toro getting just mauled by his former teammates there. Abu back in possession, Nasistelia with it. He'll slow things down a little bit. See what Havo can do on their break. And of course, see the golden helmet there worn by Flyer Kungan. Team's leading scorers rocking that golden helmet. Keep an eye out on those players. See what happens here now with Philadelphia in possession. It's Pemu. Dishes off to Loimu, who gets it back off a good quick pass. Better defense, though, from Havu. Kept in for the moment, but ultimately poked away. The pass finds its way to Polonso here. Down low in the corner. Takes a tour of the offensive zone. Dishes back to the point. Jay Toro, circle. D to D, back again. Not able to find the option that he wants. Alonso tried to go across there. Two Hanelli intercepted. One back here. Flyer Kungan dishes it across, but a late interception from Playmaker. He looks to lead it down the other way. He dished off to Aki. It was knocked loose. And again, Havu back in possession. Yeah, that was a huge intercept from Playmaker. Well positioned, and they forced a turnover here. A good chance there for Playmaker. Just doesn't go through. Both teams threatening. Playmaker shot on. Kick stop by Hanselino. Good rebound management from the defense in front of him. Here they go back down the other way. Alonso pulled the move. Nasistelia not fooled whatsoever. Incredible composure from the right defenseman of Philadelphia. Here's Potsloff trying to walk it in. Had a great chance. And Hanselino just got a piece of that one. Not something you expect to see there. Already halfway through, just about this first period. It's not Sustelia's shot, doesn't find a way through. Excuse me, that was Boimo trying to get it through. Now Sustelia was the one to recover. A chance here, back down the other way. Let's see what happens. Shot on, kick stop by Cafe. Failure to clear. Eki wins it back, though. Let's see what he can do. Finds Playmaker. He has a step shot off the post on the backhand. Talk about opportunity, Sin. That was the best one yet for either team, but Phila might not be done. Playmaker throws it on again. Directed to the boards there by Hanselino. Trying to get by Nasistelia, not able to do so. And Hanselino will make the stop. Yeah, huge play by Playmaker there again. And that's kind of the second time he's able to find a little bit of space behind the defense and get some room, but a great save by Hanselino, or you know, at least positioning-wise, to kind of force him to that outside area as Habu wins that face off here. Philadelphia won't be able to keep that pressure on as they were doing for a bit. Fire Kungan tries to spin away from the pressure, not able to do so. Spill up back in possession here. Now over the line, Potsloff has it poked away. Loimu will recover. Statenly called him Nasistelia not all that long ago, but Sin, very similar play styles from two of the best uh, that we've had the privilege to call. So, happens every once in a while. Playmaker has it down low in the corner here. Turns it over, though. Probably trying to get going back down the other way. Flyer Kungit takes a big hit there. Knocked loose from the puck. 
slow down here yet again. I mean, sometimes, Sim, we see that slow neutral zone trap game between two top teams, but the trading chances. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you're not going to keep either of these two teams out of the zone that well. That being said, I got to say, Philadelphia has the slight edge at really neutralizing them at the blue line. We've seen, you know, Philadelphia able to gain that line a bit more by, you know, sending someone perhaps up the middle, you know, trying to beat their trap. And it's seeming to be working so far. Havu, a bit more trouble getting that puck in as Philadelphia once again gains that line. And Kotsov just couldn't get a piece of that one. Has it around the back. Chance for Recky. Taken off the shoulder of Ponsolino. He approached the final minute here. Potsloff, self sauce with speed. Not able to get that cut into the middle on the back skate. A chance here, perhaps. Two, maybe three on one. Pass across just off the mark. Nearly gone there was Playmaker. Held in for the moment by Flyer Kungan. Two seconds left. Chance, and the captain won't be able to get the shot off. So, saying a very fast paced. First period here. No opening goal, though, to show for it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that was a potential three-on-one. Well, I mean, it was a three-on-one that, that not developed. It was Tamu who dove on the ice, missed that, um, was actually kind of mistimed the dive just slightly. It's so hard to time that as a defense and getting back on the play. But Philadelphia kind of dodged the bullet right there. And then an incredible job by Flyer Kunkin to get back and uh, intercept the uh, attempted breakout pass. Because had that gone through, that would have been an odd man for Philadelphia going back the other way. It's just neither of these two teams pulled any punches so far in that period i'm surprised that you know havu only has that one registered shot with how back and forth it seemed and honestly surprised that this is a zero zero game but perhaps not that surprised it is cafe and hansolino after all can you get those great quality chances good luck beating one of these two goaltenders although i'm sure the commentator's jinx is alive and oh well as philadelphia looking to get the break out here pops off plays it safe tamu looking to step in shut down at the blue line Villa maintains possession. Here's Potts off now. Avoids the big hit. Toe drag knocked off the puck. Regains it though. Finds the space and a good chance for Tamu. Just doesn't find the back of the net there either. The pass off the mark for Havu. That'll be an icing call. And again, I mean, Sin 10 1 1 for Havu this season, but we've seen at times, you know, that chemistry, whether it's just not quite where you expect it to be. And of course, I mean, you have those lineup changes. Well, good job by Finelli winning that draw going to be, you know, a story as we continue to see how this season pans out. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, how, how when they choose to be aggressive as well, we're seeing Jay Toro step up a lot at the line for hits. That last one, you mentioned it, he missed it. It could have could have cost him a chance, you know, in their own end, perhaps a goal. He, he sort of dodged the bullet right there. So, you know, perhaps playing with a bit of a chip on his shoulder, which is never a bad thing unless it causes you to make some mistakes. So I want to have to look to clean that up right here is Philadelphia. They're really not seeming to be missing any beats here in their own end, especially holding that line. Knocked loose at the blue line. Philadelphia definitely getting the majority of the possession so far, but we know possession means absolutely nothing if you don't do anything with it. Okay, move this is over for Playmaker. The spin shut down at the line. New game for the moment here, though. Potsloff drops back to Tamu. Eki draws the call. Power play coming up for Philadelphia. Yeah, you can almost feel that one coming, how much you know, Philadelphia kept keeping that in. And, you know, Havu just one stick in the wrong area. It's going to be a Philadelphia power play here. Havu will gain possession and send it out. Let's see what they can do here. I mean, the Havu PK so far this season, 83%, which is actually only sixth in the league. But Philadelphia, surprisingly, only... 11th out of the 16 teams on the power play so far at nearly 19%. We're already halfway through. Fill it in the zone. Here's Eki. Back over. Chance shot scores! Tamu finds the opening goal on the power play. It's in his fifth of the season. And a huge goal there to set the tone.
Yeah, and that's a really pretty look and perhaps, you know, a shot taken that you're not quite expecting yet. But that's, you know, that's the game of Temu. That's why he's got now five goals on the season. You know, very kind of sneaky right there. You're expecting maybe another pass, but there you saw it. Just that slow, steady collapse coming from the defenseman of Philadelphia. We've been, we've been talking about that for season upon seasons. When they get on that power play, they just close in on you like a pack of wolves. And right there, it's Loimu to Temu who blasts it home on Hanselino, capitalizing on on the power play here, one nothing at Philadelphia. Now, Sin, I can't help but notice from the chat, of course, as always when you have two top teams in the Euro side, of course, every move being critiqued. I will agree with something that was just pointed out in chat. Not all that long ago in NA, if you dumped the puck, it was LOL, you dumped the puck? What a loser! And now it's these NA teams don't dump the puck? Man, what's wrong with them? It's my favorite. I love the debate every single time it warms my heart as that one nearly warmed the inside of the net just by the post is that a saying it is now but since we're already down to just seven minutes left here in the second period i mean this game has been incredibly fast paced yeah, absolutely, and so much like a good thing, it seems to be over too quickly. Oh, that being said, big Ooh, turnover. Good, good chance for Playmaker there. Eki shot off a leg as well, and Philadelphia, as this one goes on, really starting to get more and more opportunities. Eki had a great chance. There's an interception by Playmaker. Loose puck bouncing around. Again, you mentioned it for Havu. Losing in the semifinals last year, some changes this year. You can see right now, I mean, Philadelphia with it being that solid unit, the only change to their lineup, the left defenseman in Tamu. Of course, just picked up the opening goal. I mean, Phil right now certainly having Havu on the back foot in this fight so far. Here's Loimu off the spin. Not able to hold on to it. Loose once more, and Havu right now really struggling to get any momentum going so far here. Philadelphia, it's just, you know, they got that goal and all of a sudden they crank up that aggression, but Puanza with a good turnover here. We'll see what Havu can do with it. Gets it to Flyer Kungan down low. Back to Puanza. Looked for the wrap. Just couldn't get it. Kape was able to seal off that post. Yeah, so Havu, you know, maybe some good counterattack. They're going to have to find a bit more momentum there. As I was mentioning, uh, Philadelphia has that killer instinct and it seems to get, you know, more and more strong when they get those leads as well. That shot broken up. Final minute of play here in the second period. Popsloff with a bit of space scores on the backhand. That quickly. Philadelphia find the insurance goal in the final minute of the second. Send the task for Havu just got that much more difficult. Yep, and it's got to be stated at this point, that's about the third, maybe fourth time that Philadelphia has eight, has been able to send a forward in there and split the defense on one of those, you know, fast plays up the middle, those north-south plays. We saw, you know, off the first draw where they sent Pleamaker up the middle. Another time where they sent him up the middle. That time it's Potslav just gaining that one step needed against Jay Toro and Nasustelia, and this time beats on Salino in the dying seconds of this second period. That is a massive goal for Philadelphia. Philadelphia and Havu now really on the ropes. They got to find something and they got to find it quick. Six seconds okay, left here in the second. Man. That one knocked loose. Philadelphia, our defending champions, will take that two to nothing lead into the third period. Again, undefeated so far this season. And you can see why at this stage. Again, Havu 10 1 and 1 on the year. But so far, Sim, it's been all Philadelphia. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we've seen a couple opportunities from Havu, but, you know, again, we we talked about it a bit when they took on Vesa Pompa. You know, Havu likes to play to that system, but right now, I mean, Philadelphia understands what system they want to play, and, and they're really trying to take them off their game. So it's up now to, to Havu to make some adjustments, which, you know, to be fair, oftentimes they haven't had to do. But this season especially, we've seen them at times, you know, really, really needing to make that adjustment necessary. And maybe they just quite haven't. Again, we haven't covered these guys since the beginning of that season where they were struggling, perhaps chemistry wise. This is a huge opportunity for them to show that they're willing to make those adjustments. But still, after two periods, just one 
registered shot from Pavu. Credit to Philadelphia. They're hemming them in their own zone. They're stopping them at the blue line. They're swarming those puck carriers, not giving them any time and space to set up. And it's it's really coming to show. I mean, Philadelphia, as this game has gone on, they're really starting to take over. And once they got their first goal, you could just see it in the way they are playing. They got more aggressive. They, you know, they smelled that blood in the water. They're going in for the kill now. We'll see if they can hold and maybe extend this lead in the third or if Havu can fight their way back and uh, try to at least sneak a point out of this one. I mean, we've seen it before with Havu as well. They have a style. They stick to it no matter what. Not too many teams capable of shutting it down. Philadelphia, they have to do a good job so far, but Again, we'll see what happens here. Havu, of course, without their starting center in Dominoiti. And, I mean, for the majority of teams in the offense, I mean, obviously the importance of a center. If the offense doesn't run directly through the center, obviously a very, very big part of it. And yeah, I think we're I'm... seeing the effect that that's having here tonight. Yeah, at least a little bit. I mean, it's, you know, it, it's a big change. Uh, Dominoiti, you know, it's such, such a force. And... He's come up with some huge, huge clutch goals. And, you know, right now, Havu could use one. So, you know, you hate to kind of be questioning the lineup change and calling out Hunelli. This, you know, right now where they're at isn't completely on him. But, you know, it's they got to find something here as Philadelphia again in on the attack. Kept in there by Loimu, but only for the moment. Havu trying to go back down the other way. Jay Toro gets absolutely trucked by a former teammate there. Havu right now, that clock ticking down in a very rapid succession here. They need to try to find a way to get something going, but it's just an overwhelming presence from Philadelphia here. Jay Tor finds Polanco on the outlet pass, gets over the line, finds the open man, Hanelli. Quick drops down into the corner here, broken up for the moment. Polanco at least pokes it back to Jay Toro, his pass into the middle, Hanelli just trying to fire one on. Incredible layers in defense for Philadelphia as well. Makes you think, oh, I'd have time to pass. I'd have time to spin out of that. Easier said than done uh, when you have two of the best defenders in the world in your face at all times here. And pops off, of course, arguably the best defensive centerman that the ECL has to offer. He has it here. He draws the trip. Philadelphia right now all over Havu. We'll see if Kape can get to the bench. And onto the ice, he does. Eki. Able to hold on to that one. Health of the point. One timer knocked down by Hans Lino. And again, Philadelphia will go to the power play. Yeah, and I was I was just about to, you know, uh, uh, kind of praise Havu, especially Jay Toro, for reading that, you know, short side opportunity from Patsoff that Philadelphia wanted, but not a chance here. They do a good job winning that face off, perhaps getting the clear here. Uh, but they got to also look to attack. The self sauce fails, and Philadelphia is back in possession. The big issue, right, is with nine minutes left, do you elect to kill it off, or do you take that risk to try and get back into it? That one knocked down, second chance again broken up, and Flyer Coongan send it all the way down. 50 seconds to go now on the Philadelphia power play. 8.20 remaining here in the third. They gain the line again. Eki gets it back after a failed pass. Pass across, broken up. They make a shot, never found its way through. Again, still fighting for it here around the back. Jay Toro able to at least get it out of the zone. We are back to five on five. Time winding down for Havu here to find the breakthrough. Just again, pass off the mark. No icing on the call. Clock keeps ticking. They try the quick out to flex. Straight to the awaiting arms of Loima. Trouble there for Tamu, but again, I mean, it's in right now. It's just nothing Havu can seemingly do. Philadelphia, you know, you knock it loose, you get it right back. Just those 50-50 bounces all going to Philo right now. Chance here, though, for Flyer Kungan. And again, the second he gets the puck in a bit of open space, swarmed by three players. Yeah, and that is what Philadelphia is just so good at, and they've been so good at that these prior two seasons. It's really, really showing it, showing itself right now against an elite team like Havu. Just Philadelphia, the aggression, all sides of the puck, and, you know, it's leading to the possession that they have, and they try to split the D once again. Almost made it. Good bump there from Nasustelia. A chance here for Flyer Kungen, perhaps. Bumped off by Potsloff. Incredible two-way play, but a rough turn over there. Polanzo, nowhere to go, loses it to the active sticks. 
An offside call with 121 to go. I mean, sin again, we've talked about it. We have seen impressive performances from Philadelphia over the past few seasons, and especially last year, they really made that change in emphasis to be a more defensive squad. I mean, they went undefeated in the playoffs, or with the exception of one game, I should say. Northern Ascendancy took one game in the opening round, and then they just steamrolled their way through the final. It's been a bit more of a tumultuous time for Habu as of late, and again, I think we're seeing it here, just how strong this Phil lineup is. We have 40 seconds here, and a power play again coming up for Philadelphia. This has been uh, more of a one-sided performance, I think, than we would have suspected. You know, this is very much a shock. Yeah, absolutely, and that's a bit of a frustration call right there. As again, I mean, at this point, I would be frustrated too. Like, you get that puck in the zone, <laughs> turnover force. Good gracious, is this Philadelphia team on one right now? But yeah, I mean, you you have that puck in their end. You're trying to get you know something going, and then you lose the puck. You get bumped off. You get that puck back. Two more players knock that puck off your stick. You know, you go for a stick lift, take a hook, and it's just bit of a frustration. And I mean, how could you not be? This Philadelphia team has really, really shown that they have control of this matchup so far. Final five seconds here. Chance for Jay Toro. Can't get the shot off. Loose puck chip to the corner. And with that, Kape accomplishes what we thought might be a little bit more difficult to achieve today. You see the man right there. Now the all-time leader in shutouts in NHL gamer history. 77 now for him. Unbelievable stuff there. I mean, Sin, it wasn't the busiest of games for him. Again, that was just an incredibly dominant performance from Philadelphia. And you know, it's a pretty good sign, Sin, when you see in chat, like, oh man, Habu doesn't look that good. For someone who's more familiar with the scene, for guys like us who have been here, seen Habu, seen them win championships, seen them dominate this Philadelphia squad in the past really shows how much more Philadelphia have improved and how much yeah. of an impressive performance that is. Yeah, and you know, let's 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 go back a bit when you mentioned that Philadelphia really added that huge defensive element to their to their game last season. And then, you know, the season prior to that, Playmaker had like like it was like 60 goals in the season. Then they, you know, he took a step back in his production last season to make Philadelphia a more defensive squad. And now you're looking at those numbers. You see Pleamaker and Eki on top of, 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 of points throughout the, throughout the, uh, the, uh, the division. And also, Oh, guess what? Philadelphia is still the best defensive team. I mean, talk about adding a layer to your game and then also gaining back the one that you gave up last season to, uh, it's honestly it's that this that's what the good teams do they don't you know replace one thing with, with something else for very long they maybe take a step back but they took two steps forwards and this this is a scary team I, I honestly philadelphia is a scary team right now there's no other way to say it never would have expected to see havu shot even with the change at center uh simply inexplicable that has to be probably i mean both can be true at the same time sin Bad game for Havu, incredible game for Philadelphia. I don't think you uh, necessarily have one without another. You know, they're very much uh, equal parts as to what we saw there. And again, for Havu, I mean, you, you look right now. Again, we, we talked about it in the pregame. Losing two games, I believe, out of their first four. Undefeated since. But man, not having Dominoiti in that lineup. You could tell the effects uh, that that had. And again, Hanelli right now, three games played for this team at center still just one point it is a completely different havu squad uh you know and a completely different performance ultimately that we saw there compared to what we're used to seeing but there is a lot more to talk about here before we head into our second game of this matchup we'll be back after a quick word from our sponsors don't go anywhere Wilhelm vie nakkikioskille kotikatsomossa. Minkä päällä lakukastike maistuu parhaalta? Ei voi tietää, ellei kokeile. Kouvolan lakritsi. So again, a, a big thank you to our sponsors at Kouvolan lakritsi via play and of course Wilhelm. 
but still thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> oh, one, of, one of my favorite jerseys in the collection now, of course. And But again, we are just about ready for the second game. Normally, heading into the second game, we try to talk about, all right, what changes? What do we look for with both teams? Yeah, Philadelphia doesn't have anything to worry about. We are focused solely on what Havu has to do here. And at the end of the day, you can sit there and say, ah, dump and chase, you'll get more chances. I don't know about that one, Chief. You can sit here and say, ah, man, take some shots. Something's got to go in against Kape from somewhere. I don't know about that one, Chief. I mean, again, this Philadelphia team, for every weakness you think that they're, you might be able to exploit by throwing a different look at them, this is a team that has been well forged by incredible playoff battles, a ton of experience in competitive games. I mean, again, you're talking about somebody like Eki, who, you know, in terms of the single player success translates over here. You talk about someone like Kape in terms of having success in other games as well, like FIFA. I mean, this team, in terms of this competitive style, in terms of being able to adapt on the fly, among the very best, if not the best, certainly, uh, in the elite division that we have here, what do you do if you're Havu? Because the thought has to be, I mean, how do we break through no matter what we try to throw at Philadelphia. Yeah, and that's another thing that about Philadelphia is, you know, potential is one thing, ability is one thing, but, you know, you said it, like the willingness to sort of improve that on or, or switch things up on the fly is something that we continue to see from Philadelphia, maybe a bit less so on the Havu gaming side, but I know chat maybe at times writing these guys off, but that is the wor that's the last thing you want to do against a team like Havu. The second you write a team like Havu off, they pounce. They make you pay for it. I mean, they. It's again. It's it's almost like a bend don't break kind of strategy from Havu. You see it from certain teams in the NHL. Islanders. Sorry, Tuki. Um. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just you know, their ability to kind of make something out of nothing at times. It seems like oh, are they? They're getting outplayed, and then boom, they counterattack. They score. Something happens like that. You know, bad bounce. Anything. So Havu, they find that one opening. All of a sudden, they're on the upper hand, and then they're suffocating you with their style. All of a sudden, you know, Philadelphia has to commit more man, more men to the rush. Havu can counterattack. So I think the first goal of this next game is going to be so, so important. And Havu, they got to be, you know, ready from that puck drop. I think they allowed Philadelphia to jump on them a bit too early, and then they just didn't feel like they could completely establish their system. Absolutely. So again, now Philadelphia 11 and 0 on the season in this 30 game campaign. Havu down to 10, 2 and 1. Of course, these were our top two teams entering play today. Havu uh, were technically above them because of the games at hand. We'll see what the standings happen to be by the end of the night. Here we go. Game two underway. Philadelphia, of course, in the black and orange. Havu, the road team in this one and I I mean certainly it starts off by uh, you know by Havu looking for a great chance there and that was a great block all things considered by Flyer Kungan but again you have Philadelphia right back in possession a little bit of space there Eki Pleamaker both giving chase they get the one-two punch and Pleamaker on the shorthand side try to get that chance that one timer blocked down in front again I mean, you can see that's the main thing that you're seeing on the breakout here, Sin. For Havu, you have to immediately drop the puck back. There's no space to generate a rush. Yeah, and the second they drop that puck back, there's even more Philadelphia jerseys looking for the turnovers. That one doesn't go through. Don't think he intended to shoot that on the backhand. Chance for Poanso and a blocker stop by Akape. That one off the pads. Botsloff is able to make the play. Eki to Pleamaker now, trying to weave his way through. Pass in front, nearly found. It's intended target in Temu. Good quick movement there at the point around the back to Eki. Looking. Finds Loimu. Can't get a shot off, at least the power. That one was easily picked off. And again, Philadelphia able to win it back. I uh, just can't help but think. How oh, is that one's banked off the side of the net? Let's see what Playmaker can do. Maybe Potsloff. One timer and a big glove stop there by Han Salino. I mean, I can't help but chuckle if someone thinks, like, ah, just one more LT and you'll leave your way past this Villa defense. I don't know. Just a novel concept. 
Yeah, I mean, well, when, when you're used to doing one thing, I mean, it, it can be hard to kind of, you know, switch things up, definitely. Oh my goodness, as a pass goes on Hanselino, he has to be rough there, but I'm going to kind of go back and talk about what Philadelphia did on that last possession when they were taking those shots from the one tees in the high slot in the point. Instead of shooting far side as they're doing last game, they start shooting short side, so they're like, they're, they're really trying to find, you know, and see if they can exploit and get Hanselino cheating. It's, you know, tough to do that, but you know, you like that mentality. Con Constantly looking for a new weakness, constantly looking for something else to exploit. And you now that's what really gives Philadelphia that killer instinct. As Hava finally find a way to weave their way through the defense, played around the back, tried to go back. And again, it's Tamu who's just all over that one. Talk about Tamu as the puck here now, fitting into this lineup after a, uh, a series of surprising transfers in the offseason. I mean, in terms of that instant chemistry with his team, he might have adapted faster than anybody else that's been on a new club this season. Yeah, perhaps, uh, you know, minus, uh, you know, the H-Reds of uh, Villapoyca, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's been impressive. Chance here, Aki, the playmaker, he scores! Sin, you talked about it, can you get Hanselino moving? And it looks like the former 60-goal man tucked that one five hole for the game's opening goal. Yep, and that's again, you know, looking for new weaknesses, shooting everywhere else, you know, gets in tight and using that, you know, perceived weakness of those Euro goaltenders' refusal to go down Butterfly, puts it home five hole, the angle wasn't bad, it's just, you know, could didn't cover that bottom of the net and they came in with speed very quickly, the in tight pass, Eki to Pleamaker, how many times we've said that over all the seasons, and they're up one nothing once again. But we'll see how Havu respond. Chance for Playmaker off the draw. Can't double it up. Hanselino with a big poke check holding him in the blue paint for a little bit, just as a bit of an extra show. And another big sauce pass. Here's Playmaker in a bit of space. Wins it back and scores on the back end. Ripping former teammate Jay Toro the puck in the process. Oh my goodness. Again, they get that first goal and then there's just... There's zero hesitation there on the warpath, and you see it right there. Good initial play from Jay Toro, but Pleamaker didn't give up on that. Got that puck back from either a stick lift or a little bit of that, you know, incidental bubble contact, and he tucks it home on the backhand once again. Havu down early, now on the ropes perhaps early. I mean, oftentimes a two-goal lead, you don't consider that on the ropes yet, but against this Philadelphia defense, how can you not at this point? An incredible performance here from Philadelphia, just completely outworking Havu in all aspects. One timer blocked down by Flyer Kungan. Still plenty of time to work with, but it is incredible to see the leaps and bounds that Phil has taken over the past two seasons here. Of course, it was season 10 that we saw Havu win. Phil wins season 11. Wraparound goal! Tamu! On the pension, it is 3-0, and Havu is falling apart at the seams. I mean, this is this is getting out of hand quickly. I mean, Tamu, what a play by him, a wraparound goal. The defenseman, the lowest man in the zone. I mean, that's the sort of confidence level we see coming out from Philadelphia. And Tamu, you know, the newest addition on the squad, you said it, not missing a beat. The chemistry not off one bit. And a 3 nothing lead here in the first period. Havu have to respond. Something. You need something. You got to stop the bleeding and, you know, just uh, some kind of stepping stone to work your way back because you have not scored against this team yet. And this is absolutely incredible. I mean, again, we said expect the unexpected at the start of this stream here and absolutely this is what we're seeing right now i mean chance there Hanselino able to make the cover he'll play it out i think that shows the attitude right now uh from the goaltender towards his forwards his plea maker wins another one keep the attack on big blocker stop there final six seconds of the period as we are seeing philadelphia walk over their biggest rivals and biggest competition in the elite division. I have never seen a, a more one-sided performance here in this matchup. This no. has been stunning. It, yeah, absolutely stunning. I mean, could we be witnessing right now the changing of the guard? 
the the big two. I mean, H Reds, what we've seen so far, they're on close to that level Philadelphia is, and so far, Havu just hasn't shown that they can get back to that. And they're taking on a team where is this is the team to beat again, Philadelphia, the defending champs. They have they have, you know, put themselves in that position. We're the team to beat. Show us that you can beat us. And so far, Havu has had no answer for the attack, the aggression, the defense, the everything that Philadelphia has to offer. Habu Gaming has simply not been able to get around them again. Just one registered shot in the first period. I mean, Sin, you mentioned it though, the you know, potential changing of the guard. These two clubs traded the, uh, the championship back and forth for a few seasons. It was Philadelphia winning last year against H-Reds in the final who knocked off Havu. And indeed, now, I mean, it's a, it's amazing how quickly the narrative can change. I mean, 10-1-1 one one entering today. But at the end of the day, the playoffs are all you care about, and presumably the championship goes through Philadelphia. And if this is how the performance is going, it does make you wonder. Again, the X factor of Dominoiti, the main center for Havu, not being in the lineup today, I think you can see the effect that that's having. But regardless, I mean, a loss like this, tough to bounce back from. Here's Potsloff back to Eki. Nowhere to go. Good bit of collapsing defense there from Havu. Eki loses it to double team. Let's see what Havu can do going back down the other way. At no point have they been able to establish their main offense, and I think that's why you see the lack of shots, and you see it there. Like, Havu among the very best at the low cycle, utilizing the office space behind the goal and trying to exploit the short side shots. And they have not been able to gain that area of the ice consistently whatsoever. And you can see here, Philadelphia, if you're gonna try to take some low shots from the outside, it is absolutely not going through. Yeah, like, I'm, I'm trying to like theorize and and something like what can Havu, Havu do to, to sort of create space? I'm like, okay, maybe they can look for high one-timers. Oh, that was just broken up. Maybe just throw the puck on. Oh, that shot was just blocked. Maybe they can go around the net now. Okay, well, there's a choo-choo train named Tamu who laid you out as you were trying to establish that low cycle. It's just, it's, this is maybe the best we've ever seen Philadelphia, and that should worry everyone. 9.28 to go here in the second period. Phila winning that first game 2 to nothing, And we'll see what happens here now again. Hava oh, struggling to get anything. Going to have a chance there and a big stop by Kafe. Luckily, luckily having that one uh, not go five hole. He didn't end up down in the butterfly. Loose puck here on the doorstep. And again, Philadelphia coming up with those 50-50 battles. Chance there, Hanelli ends up back at the point. D to D, Jay Toro wheels through. And again, loose puck, just nowhere to go. Recovered once more. One-timer intercepted, playmaker. Read that one perfectly. Here's Eki with speed over there for Potsloff. Just not able to find the back of the net on that attempt. This will go down for icing with 5.50 remaining. What a little in tight sauce there from Eki on the attempt, but a better defensive play from his former teammate Jay Toro to just get enough on that to break it up and not allow that chance to go through. And then on the flip side, they they don't connect on the sauce. And good chance there, at the far post for Eki. Avu trying to get down ice, nowhere to go. This Philadelphia defense playing arguably the best game I have uh, ever seen them play, and we said that a few times last season as they just got better and better. Havu having in the zone and they score! Just like that, Sin, a little bit of space finally opened up. Pawanso is able to beat Kape on the far side for his team leading 16th goal of the season. Yep, smart play by him. Exactly what he needed to do right there as he got that puck and just looked for the tiny bit of space, ripped the shot, tried to get Hanselino moving one way, shoot the other way. He did so and gets that ice-breaking goal that they so desperately needed here. Maybe that's the start of something. Uh, either way, I mean, it's just, you know, kind of a bang-bang play. Philadelphia couldn't quite surround him, collapse on him in, in time, but I like the, the decision-making from Puanzo. Just kind of rip it, see what happens, and it goes in. Had good positioning there. Damu just wasn't able to break it up. So again now, 3-1. Havu on the board for the first time in today's matchup. 
Something I did not expect to say, but here we are. Again, expect the unexpected. That pass over to Eki doesn't go. Tamu gets it down low to him. Potsloff tried the short side. Hanselino with the save. Playmaker again holding it down low. Interesting bounce there, but Habu's all over it. We approach the final minute. Buonzo battling for this one. Potsloff's there to help out. Double team pressure to win it back. Tried the short side. Cop at the save. And squeezes the legs to get the face off. Again, I like it. Not the most prettiest of plays, but you never know what can happen with those bounces. You know, kind of like a jam play situation. Now they're in that aggressive face-off looking for that one-time play. Got just wide of the glove side there. Held in the attacking zone, at least for the moment. Eki was able to break it up. Here's Flyer Kungan. Out of the center. Hanelli looking goes to the point. Shot scores! Jay Toro with a bomb from the point. Scoring against his former club, and just like that, we have a one goal game heading into the third period. That shot going in with just four seconds left. Jay Toro's sixth of the year. Yep, and that puck had eyes. I mean, I, I told you, chat, the second you write this team off, the second you think that they don't have a shot, well, they're right back into this three to two. Great, great job from Jay Toro. Zero hesitation, just bombing that. And what a howitzer of a shot that was picking the corner on the side that, or sorry, that Cape was sort of cheating on too. Just beats him on the high blocker. And we have ourselves a game here. Three to two, only five registered shot from Habu. But hey, two of them have found the back of the net. An incredible shot there from Jay Toro. Again, one of the better Goal scoring defenseman in the league. You get another look at it there. Stan, I mean, interestingly enough, the stats incredibly close uh, given the circumstances. Again, it's one of the things I wish that we could see in the game for the stat tracking. I want to see shot attempts, not just, uh, you know, shots on net. It would help tell the full story as that one deflects wide. Third period underway here in this one. Now, suddenly, a one goal game. Here's Playmaker gets to Eki and Hanselino. Able to seal off that short side post. Yeah, and if you're Philadelphia, you know, maybe you're not panicking yet, but you got to, you know, maybe do a bit of a double take here. You're like, okay, well, you know, they had to score eventually, but those two quick ones right here, it's, you know, you got to be maybe a little more careful. We'll see if it throws them off their game at all. If they take a step back, which could be all Havu needs to kind of pounce and, and, and get their own game going and start establishing the rough. That being said, huge turnover forced by Eki. Down low in the corner, tried to cut in. And Nasselia says, thank you very much for the puck. It's Polanzo, nowhere to go. Immediately double teamed. Again, Philo wins it back. And they draw the trip as well. That is a rough call. I think that's Jay Toro, most recent goal scorer, who's going to be taking a seat. Yeah, rough one to take now. Now you got to be careful. You're seeing him go on that certain uh, face-off setup on the defensive end to try to block those 1T opportunities. The good win there. Pressure from Potsloff. Great job from Flyer Kungan, just staying patient with that and getting the clear. Now Philadelphia got to work to regain that line. 16 minutes to go here in the third period. Again, our second game of two between these two clubs. And again, coming up after this, Bessa Pampa take on Northern Ascendancy. Two teams as well with playoff aspirations. So with that, again, we focus here on the task at hand. Fleamaker down in the corner on the off wing. Back to the point, shot in a glove, stop there. What a shot there from Tamu on the flip side. Just not Hanselino on that one. You have the quick wind up for the slap shot. Elected to go short side. Hanselino not fooled, not over committing. Gloves that down. Set play here off the draw. Great passing. Hands it out by Habu though. Chance for Tamu yet again. Has Playmaker. Looking, stepping in. Tried the short side. Eki. Back down low for Playmaker once more tries the slap shot at the short side post. This one out of the zone. We are back to five on five. A successful kill for Havu Gaming. Let's see what they can do. Again, trailing now by just one goal as it's gone on here. They found a bit of that offensive form that, I mean, you could tell they're struggling to find here. I, I don't know. Um, in, t in terms of what was going on or what is going on with Dominoiti, just not in the lineup today. Don't necessarily uh, believe that would have been uh, the plan or the expectation. So, shot there broken up in front, though. That was an interesting one as Polanzo threw it on, bounced right to Flyer Kungan, just didn't have the space to make anything happen. 
Yeah, a bit of a rough bounce. He saw so many Philadelphia bodies go to block that shot, and it trickles through right to Flyer Kungin, perhaps the last person you want one-on-one -on -one with your goaltender, and now a jump off the draw from Potsloff. See what Abu can do down low. It's where they want to be. Flyer Kungin back to Polonzo. Spins. Not able to get the pass off. Again, Potsloff able to get that pass away. Eki slows down at the line. Possession, possession, possession. The name of the game for Philadelphia, but broken up at the line once more for Havu. Plenty of time to work with, but eight and a half minutes can also, you know, really start to uh, tick away incredibly fast when you're in this situation of needing one more goal. Break down again here for Philadelphia. Flea maker bullies his way through the defense. Pass across and just out of the reach of Potsloff. Huge chance wasted there. Flyer Kungin draws the trip and Havu will go to the power play for the first time tonight. Yeah, a bit uncharacteristically aggressive there from Loimu. At least great perfectly timed move from Flyer Kungin. They don't get the face off win though, but I just it was a huge play from Flyer Kungin getting the stick lift off on Tamu creating that two-on-one -on -one situation that kind of forced uh, Loimu to have to try to make a play right there. They got a power play because of that, but see if they can hold that zone now. Over the line here, a chance. Huck at the point, a minute to work with. On the man advantage. Looking, cuts back. Jay Toro has it again. Held in by Polonzo. Quick give and go. Polonzo again. Shot just off the blocker. May have clipped the post, and Philadelphia will clear. Yeah, I think I heard it a little bit. I'm not too sure if Kape also got a piece of it, but that definitely grazed the iron nonetheless, and it's getting closer and closer for Havu here. We are back to even strength. Five minutes to go. A huge opportunity not taken advantage of for Havu. Turn over here, and not able to get that shot off. What a chance. Again, Flyer Kungan on the doorstep. Can't take advantage. The sauce to Potsloff. Broken up at the last moment. Three minutes to work with now here for Havu. With the five overtimes in our season opening broadcast. Don't worry, boys. We haven't forgotten. How could I possibly ever forget? Two minutes to go here. Can they find the tying goal? Bit of a miscommunication there in the middle of the ice. And again, a pass. Just not able to find its intended target. Eki loses it, though. Polonzo holds. Looking. D to D pass. Broken up. What a read by Eki. Final a minute to go. That one's intercepted. Let's see what Havu can do. Running out of time and just missed time to the line with 51 seconds to play. Yeah, running out of time. They ran out of space right there to get that puck through. Good job by Philadelphia to collapse. We're going to see that timeout coming now from Havu as well. Still only those five registered shots. So again, yeah, we, I'd really love to see the attempted shots because, I mean, Philadelphia has done a tremendous job of getting in lanes, not letting those pucks get through onto their goaltender. And, yeah, it's, I mean, Havu done a much better job. And really, they have made the adjustments. They're getting more aggressive on that four check. They're getting in lanes a bit more. Something that I was kind of bewildered to not mention uh, in that first game was Flyer Kunging being a menace on the four check, which he usually is. He's doing a much better job of that, forcing various turnovers. We get another look at the couple goals from them, just getting the puck and shooting it. And it works. And we're back into gameplay now. Here we go. The final 40 seconds. Can Havu make something happen here? Again, trailed 3-0 at one point in this game. Turnover there, though, not the pass that Nasistelia is looking for. Ultimately, here's the chance, and Potsloff just can't drive that one home. Another rush for Havu. Broken up, Polonzo can't hold it. What a play by Loimu. He gives chase. One more chance for Havu here. Can they make something happen? All the way around. Knocked loose, still there. Flyer Kungan, Jay Toro looking. Pass broken up by Eki. Five seconds to go. Broken up once more. The chance, pucks loose and the penalty called with 1.1 to go. The empty nets. And let's see what happens here. Do they have time for a set play? Tie up on the draw, that will do it. Too little, too late. For Havu, as Philadelphia remain undefeated, they move to 12-0 on the season, and their effort to retain their title as champions. Yeah, and honestly, a bit surprising that they do remain undefeated. I mean, 
maybe not so in hindsight looking at this at this game at the games played but we know when, when you enter this matchup you just expect a split and you probably expect one of those games to go to overtime we are ever so close to the second one going to overtime but you said it they put themselves in a hole too early and they couldn't quite dig themselves out in time they just ran off and it was you know great defensive effort from philadelphia there as havu was looking very dangerous on that last possession but you know probably the best penalty to take there with that 1.1 second left just kind of throwing sticks and bodies trying to you know just stop them from getting one of those shots on and not enough time with the 1.1 second to do anything else but try to win it cleanly which allows Potsloff to just go for that tie up pretty much unhindered and that spells the doom for havu here but Really, what kind of did it is they didn't get off to the start that they needed. Philadelphia jumped on them early and were really able to hold their advantage throughout the entire way. I mean, a very rough first game for Havu. They bounced back well in the second one, but still not enough to overcome Philadelphia with what was an incredibly strong performance. And again, I mean, you have to wonder, Sin, we won't see these two teams meet again this year unless they are in the playoffs, if I'm not mistaken here. And what might that matchup be around the time that it were to happen? I mean, again, uh, you never know, right? We thought they'd definitely meet in the playoffs last year. H-Reds had something to say about that. So a very interesting turn of events here tonight in the way that this one happened to play out. We'll see what happens moving forward. I mean, again, you talk about it, though. These are the top two teams in the regular season right now. You don't expect that to change. Maybe H-Reds can make something happen here if Havu were to continue to struggle a little bit more down the stretch. But for now, I mean, a big, big result for Philadelphia here tonight. Yeah, and a huge statement. That it's it's This is a huge statement victory for them. I mean, okay. they're, they're saying we're going to remain at the top and... Havu couldn't do anything to push them off that mountain for now. And again, Philadelphia re remaining undefeated. Havu now dropping to 10, 3, and 1 on the season. I mean, that's oftentimes you only see them with about three re three losses at, at the end of the season, at the, at the end of a season. I mean, it's, it's kind of surprising to see them there already, but that kind of speaks to what Havu's kind of been going through this season as the adjustment period, you know. But now from here, can they make more necessary adjustments to be able to pick up more important points? Because leaving points on the table here against a team like Philadelphia, while it may not be, you know, horrible, you want to at least pick up the split, at least for your mentality. Absolutely. So with that, again, we uh, thank you very much for joining us for the first part of our broadcast here. For those of you uh, looking to check out one of the most hyped games of the season, hey, appreciate you for uh, checking us out. Of course, NHLGamer.com for all the information that you need. But we are not done here today. We will be back after a, a brief intermission for our second matchup of the night. It is Vesa Pampa taking on Northern Ascendancy. Some playoff implications, perhaps, as well in that matchup. So, again, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after a few minutes. Minkä päällä lakukastike maistuu parhaalta? Ei voi tietää, ellei kokeile. Kouvolan lakritsi. Wilhelm vie nakkikioskille kotikatsomossa. All right, everybody, we are back. Thank you for sticking all with us. Tukey still here alongside my broadcast partner in Sin and Sin. We had El Clasico, the first one, of course, Philadelphia Hub, the first matchup of our rivalry night, because here we have the second part, an underrated rivalry in a lot of regards here in the elite division between two playoff caliber teams who currently find themselves on the outside looking in, and it's Vesa Pampa and Northern 
ascendancy. We got a couple of things to break down here before getting to the first game of two. A quick look at the most recent results around the league in case you missed it. I can't imagine that you did. Philadelphia pulling off the double against Habu, but Sim, we also talked about it. Sawo playing Yippy Voskala. We do see a 1 1 split there, but an overtime win for Sawo means Yip pull away with three points, which is a great result for them. Yeah, that's huge for them over the course of this season so far. And then you see, you know, Feriestad taking two, you know, the two games off of Tunnel Vision, but maybe a bit closer than Feriestad would have been hoping. Of course, H Reds, perhaps uh, no surprise getting that win over Kova as we saw earlier. And, uh, a split between YMCA and Goons as well. You know, two teams with playoff aspirations once again, you know, taking a, a set of points off each other. Sin, I have to correct you. And it's done, it's fine because I read oh, it wrong. Goodness. The first oh, my goodness. Uh-huh. What? I read it wrong the first time, too. Uh, Kova Esports pulled off the double against H Reds, uh, which, again, expect the unexpected has been the theme of the division. I wish you could see Sin's face right now uh, as uh, as he realized. But yes, I mean, yeah, it's I saw the scores. And for some reason, my brain just decided the pictures were on the opposite sides. Yeah, absolutely. That is uh, perhaps the most surprising thing about today after I, I had even dang. I mean, wow. OK, yeah. So with that, we'll get you a look at the updated standings right now. Of course, NHLGamer.com is where you can see all of these numbers consistently. But you see now Philadelphia have reclaimed the top spot over Havu. Of course, Feierstad and Sawa round out the top four. Atred's currently in fifth, but you can see they have six games at hand. Sawa already over the midway point of their season, 16 out of 30 games played. But we are focusing today on the teams that currently sit 11th and 13th. That is Northern Ascendancy and Vesa Pampa. For the NA side, Sin, underperforming a bit this year. The offense isn't quite what was expected. Or maybe there's just a bit more of a spotlight on that because the defense isn't quite what you would have expected it to be either. Whereas for Vesa Pampa, of course, wholesale change is the only uh, returning player was Ekin, who is now the captain of this squad. So, I mean, the numbers really do kind of show us it's a very, very important matchup for these two teams. Yeah, absolutely. And Vesa Pompa, you know, did all those roster changes, but they're kind of, you know, almost a mirror team, like a sort of a mini Havu with the way they're just so good defensively and, you know, maybe not getting the goal support that they would want or need. But, you know, we remember back to our, our first broadcast where they they split the game with Havu and went to those five overtimes. It was just such a, a defensive battle going on. So Vesa Pompa, very, very strong in that regard. And we'll see if they're able to do that. And that's a tough matchup, of course, for Northern Ascendancy, who is wanting to score more goals and have gone through a, a, an immense amount of a uh, lineup uh, swap this season alone. Absolutely. I mean, you talk about the lineup swaps as well. Before we get to the lineups, though, uh, we did get a quote here from former captain of Vesa Pampa. It was Laminance who just transferred over to Feriestad this season. Sin, he had this to say, during my time as Vesa Pampa captain, Northern Ascendancy was without a doubt our biggest rivals and most prestigious matchup. A clash between play styles, one organization with a long history in the scene in Ascendancy, and the other fairly short in comparison. Combining this with both teams being in a prime position to go all in and matching up in the semifinals and finals for two consecutive Swedish championships, I think it's safe to say you have a deeply rooted rivalry. And I mean as well, the key point here, Sin, and I think, you know, he has that expectation that all of us have. I'm sure players like Ekin and Martindale as the captains of these squads can carry on the prestige and fire of the rivalry. And indeed, I think that is the expectation today, especially from former players. Not the only quote, of course, that we have here, though. Uh, Sin, he's in the chat now, as he always is, former member of Northern Ascendancy. To get a look from the other side of the matchup, Furion had this to say, of course, also now of Feriestad. Sin, your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, you know, he said, you know, during his years that he was with Northern Ascendancy, again, he, he's saying this exact same thing. Almost you could say that those first two lines were written the exact same from these two guys. You know, Vesa Pampa was their fierce, fiercest rival. You know, he can't speak, you know, for the mood and the respective lineups today, but there's definitely the history between those two teams. And I think you touched on that really well. Ekin, Martindale, they will remember, you know, 
those those kind of histories and they'll you know th- that that bleeds over into the other in the other teammates new or old you know you know northern sensei vesapapa all the natural ingredients for a rivalry he says you know the playoff matchups and the in the scl the semifinals in 2019 and the finals in 2020 both of them however vesapapa picked up the w's you know northern sensei you know, faster paced passing and Vesapapa with the strong possession game, you know, sort of the clash of cultures, the old versus the new. And we're kind of seeing some of that carry over, you know, Vesapapa going with that defensive style. We're seeing Northern Ascendancy try to break out into that more aggressive uh, style as we saw Martindale at least last week. Uh, had that, you know, the speedy sniper build, you know, they've both been a- around for a while, but Vesa Pompa bursting onto the scene around ECL eight, they made their way into the elite division and haven't looked back since. So with that, let's get to a look at the lineups today because we actually have changes on both sides. And we saw how those changes affected that Havu-Philadelphia matchup. For Northern Ascendancy, Fopa Toflin jumps back up to the front three, having uh, declared his intentions to play defense. This season, Martindale has now officially played all three forward spots this season. He was a center last year. He's been on the left. He's been on the right. Back in the middle today with Tunkelia. On the right, their main center, Teahola, out of action today, which means on defense, Ibis is in the lineup making his debut. We'll talk about him a little bit later on as well. Sparka Romberg in on defense, Supreeks between the pipes, and for Vesa Pompa as well, of course, it is uh, the name that I struggle with the most for no apparent reason, and I can't remember how to say it properly now, but that's fine. We have Zobi at center, which you'd think I'd struggle with more. Ekin, of course, the captain on the right-hand side. Hockey Johannes and Sebi Larson making his season debut on the right. And between the pipes, a man we'll talk about a lot today, Mr. All Svenskin Sin. With that, let's get to that center matchup as we always do, where again, it is Martindale against Zobi. And I mean, two guys who can put up points, but again, for Martindale, it's been a bit of a struggle this season. Yeah, he's kind of, you know, being that true captain and sort of just filling in where that team needs him the most. And we we saw him last week on the wing playing with a sniper build, which we've never seen him utilize. It, he looked good himself, but the team itself, they, they couldn't find a way to get the goals that they needed. You know, back in center, I'm kind of theorizing we'll probably see that grinder build coming out for him that he was so used to. Uh, but yeah, I mean, in the he maybe not the largest sample size at center, but he is boasting a 66.7% on the faceoff, which is massive. Zuvi has about a 52 percent so neither of them slouches by any means but yeah i mean obviously zuby with that point advantage and we'll see if he's able to continue that in this matchup absolutely with that we move on to the uh, battle of the wingers here with katenji of course that uh, you would never uh presume at least i wouldn't alongside ekin for vesa pomp and again on the left fopa toflin and tunkelia and again i mean sin you talk about the two on the left hand side of your screen i mean we know they have that two-way ability as defenders so we'll see what happens in terms of being able to put up points i mean fopa toflin despite playing defense has as many goals as ton kelly does at forward this season yeah i mean that's pretty impressive you know we talked about it fopa toflin playing center last year you know started back on defense and now he's back on the wing i mean this northern Tennessee squad just kind of playing musical chairs out there in the positions maybe this is the formula that'll work but you like to see it a team willing to make those adjustments yeah on the other side i mean ekin the captain always you know always a threat out there and honestly just he's i think he's done a great job of kind of you know building this vessel pompa team up after losing everyone but himself it's you know just very impressive with that of course the battles on defense as well for northern ascendancy it is ibis who again we'll talk a little bit more about in a moment next to sparka ronberg for vessel pompa Hockey Johannes, and also making his debut tonight, the season debut, is Sebi Larson. So, Sin, a lot of question marks regarding the defense pairings tonight. Yeah, there's not too many talking points besides, okay, what we, we've we seen Sebi Larson, you know, quite a, a bit more, you know, just a solid defenseman in every single sense of the word. We'll see how he gets off to the start uh, in this matchup with Northern Ascendancy. You know, they're itching to score some goals. Is this the point in time where they finish this out? And Ibiz, don't think we've ever casted a game with him in it. You know, again, that's where most of the question marks come, come through. You know, uh, we'll, we'll see what he's able to do. 
And with that, of course, the battle of the goaltenders as well as we have one of the more consistent goaltenders in the league. It is Supreeks for Northern Ascendancy going up against someone who uh, has seriously taken the elite division by storm so far is the only way to say it. Mr. Ross Fetsky. Yeah, and uh, again, great goaltender in his own right, but I think, you know, honestly, also really benefiting from the style that Vesa Pampa has come with, you know, very, very defensive, incredibly sound, which is surprising, you know, as as one of those teams who, who brought up, you know, all those players from the pro division uh, who – you know, who have, you know, played together, obviously, you know, in, in the uh, S- SHL and stuff like that. But it's, you know, quite impressive. But yeah, Supreeks, we talk about all the time. A man who makes incredible saves needs that goal support. Can, is this the week where Northern Ascendancy provides it for him? Here is hoping. With that, we move to our keys to success. We'll start off with Vesa Pampa and what they're going to have to look to do today. And I mean, Sin, I had to leave you the uh, one of the keys there. For Northern Ascendancy, I'm sure you've seen it. But for Vesa Papa here, first point, stay disciplined. They have the fewest amount of penalties taken in the league so far. And they're going against Northern Ascendancy, who have accumulated the third most. So we could see a lot of power play time for them, which should mean a few more goals, which honestly, uh, they need. The offense has been fine so far, but not overwhelming. They've taken the second fewest shots. So we'll see what Vesa Pompa can do. Second point here, of course, we talked about it. Sebi Larson suits up for the first time this season. He had very solid numbers for Vesa Pompa last year. 14 points in 22 games on the blue line. And then, of course, we talked about him already. It's early, but Mr. Osvenskin making his case to be a favorite in the rookie of the year voting at the end of the regular season. Nearly an 87% save percentage. In his eight games so far, which is absolutely fantastic. Sin, the three points here for Northern Ascendancy. Yeah, well, it's going to start off with what we keep harping on with this team. Goals, please. We've covered Northern Ascendancy a few times this season already. The lack of goal scoring, surprising to say the least, but it is their biggest hurdle so far this season. Today, Teahalo is out of that lineup. Fopa Toflin steps up from defense. You know, we, we talked about it. he dropped back there willingly, willing to do what the team wanted for success. Yet he's still tied for goals with other forward Tonkelia. So perhaps this is the spark they need to help get them uh, that offense going. I mean, third, fourth, fifth times the charm that we've been saying this. The second one here, give him the business. Ibiz returns to the elite for the first time since season seven, predominantly having played in light. He is a season one original, so experience is there, but maybe a little rust to shake off. We'll see what he brings to the table as they definitely need a spark, you know, of course, besides from Ronenberg back there. Supreeks ain't cheeks. By far one of my favorites that we have ever come up with. Tugi, you are an absolute god. So, uh, yeah, get him some offense. It's been everything but the goaltending this far, uh, so far this year that Northern Ascendancy has, you know, really needed to work on. Supreeks, keep doing what you're doing. I mean, you know, sometimes you have to impress yourself with some of those headlines. And uh, you did well, Sin. You did well. Some people would have been like, yeah, I'm not saying that. But nope. Humility is on the table sin with that we are just about ready to go for our first game of two between vesa pampa and northern ascendancy again its own mini rivalry incredibly important for both of these two teams at this stage of the season very important points up for grabs here just one point separating the two teams despite there being three spots of difference in the standings let's see how this one goes again we said expect the unexpected it's certainly unpredictable for philadelphia and havu and this matchup should be no different yeah absolutely i mean this now's the time to throw other things that your opponent isn't quite expecting we'll see if essa papa is ready to score a few more goals and same thing with northern ascendancy but they're gonna have to also shut down that attack of essa papa as well so pucks drop let's see what happens Northern Ascendancy in the early possession here. We'll see what they can do. Again, with Fofa Tolfin back up front, giving chase there. Not able to get a piece of it. And here's the captain, Ekin, for Vesa Pompa, trying to cut in and drops back, but it's intercepted well. Again, for Northern Ascendancy, the defense should be on point with the amount of experience they have out there in terms of naturally playing defense. That one off the skates of the defender. Early possession here for Vesa Pomp. A wraparound bid there for Zobi just doesn't go through. Still has it around down low. Gets it to Ekin. 
Again, drops down low. Good circling, cycling here as well, but just not able to find the space. Big poke check there by Hockey Johannes. And he is uh, back in possession here for the moment. Turn over here. Breakaway. Fopa Toflin denied. What a stop by Mr. Osvenskin on that one, Zin. Yeah, I mean, that's just wasn't fooled whatsoever. Reacted perfectly. Time didn't panic. What a save. So Pompa back in on the attack. Turn defense to offense. Good patience from Zobi. Has Ekin down low again. The wraparound bid fails. Absolutely crushed by Ibiz on that hit. And a trip there, though. Fopa Toflin said, you know, the lack of discipline from Northern Ascendancy could be a problem. Send the take a penalty under eight minutes into the game. Yeah, good pinch right there from Sebi Larson to keep that play alive. Elected not to pass down to Ekin, tried to cut to the middle. That's how he forced the, turn, uh, the, uh, the penalty, and now they're in that aggressive face-off. We'll see what they do with it. High up on the draw, but Fessel Pompa in possession. Ekin nowhere to go. Puck back down low. Zobi gives chase. Survives the pressure. Back to the point, Johannes quickly. The winger on the half wall, Ekin on his offhand. Good chance, that shot broken up well by Ibiz. Sapampa still in on the attack, though. A good chance for Zobi on the far post. Just couldn't get the puck. And that one's sent all the way down by Tunkelia. Yeah, best of Pompa, 40 seconds to work with. Right back in on the attack. D to D shot. That one wide. Legs of a defender. And good quick movement here from Vesta Pompa. Great work. Chance that one. Doesn't go. Genji maybe needed to throw that one on net so they're looking for that extra pass. He had the shooting lane. But we're back to five on five. Gets Vesta Pompa right back in on the attack. Loose puck here. Got a piece of it, did Larson. Shot on, rebound was there. Knocked away at the last moment. A good save from Supreeks. Here comes Northern Ascendancy once more, but Fopa Toflin bumped right back at him. So they'll maintain possession. Martindale, the captain. Stifled at the blue line. Then we're already saying it quite a bit here. Vesta Pompa right back in control. Still have it here. The chance, the extra pass again, and that's at least the third time you would have expected a shot in that situation, Sin. Maybe uh maybe just start pulling the trigger a bit more often. Yeah, I mean there was really no one in front of that shooting lane. He elects the pass backwards right into into traction. Oh. And maybe that's why, because Vesa Pompa find the opening goal. It's Zovi. In the slot. I mean, Sin, it's not difficult to know why they were making those extra passes. This time though it pans out. Yeah, that one looked absolutely pretty. Just a quick counterattack. The line gained by Ekin threads it over to winger Kuttenji and then over to Zovi. He capitalizes on it. one nothing Vesa Pompa as one of the descendancy trying to counterattack of their own. Go off sides here with about six minutes left in this first period. Big opening goal there for Vesa Pompa, especially given, I mean, it's interesting. Both teams have scored the same amount of goals, but... And the shot goes wide there. Despite the same amount of goals, we consider Northern Ascendancy to be the ones struggling to score. So we'll see what they're able to do. Maybe just the expectations that uh, happen to be there for their offense. Marco Romberg is passed to the forward. Again, shut down at the blue line. This will go for icing, though. Just under four minutes remaining here in the opening period. Yeah, absolutely, and a tough task ahead of Northern Ascendancy, trying to you know get your goal scoring game going against such a good defensive team. But at some point, it's not about who you're playing; it's about what you're doing. They have to find something that works. It doesn't matter how good the team is defensively; that's in front of you. You gotta, you gotta make it work. Hands there, Sebi Larson, puck down low, just not able to get a piece of it. Intercepted by Johannes, couldn't hold on to it again. Sebi Larson all over the place right now. Move it back to the point. Shot just wide through the traffic. Second chance off the side of the net. For Cuttingy, good opportunities here. Shot on by Sebi Larson. Can't get through the traffic. That's the pump, but definitely getting the better of the play here for the first period. There's going to be a penalty taken, though. Northern Ascendancy. Shockingly, we'll go to the power play. If, unless that one sneaks through, which it doesn't. Al Svenskin makes the stop. Again, Vesa Pompa. The fewest penalties taken this season. They take one here. Northern Ascendancy to the power play. Martindale wins the draw shot and a big stop by Mr. Ross Fenskin. This one's going to be on net. The kick stop. 
by Zapreeks down the other way. Please, Short-handed bid ahead. there and another big stop by Zapreeks. What a save. Short-handed opportunity there for Vesapampa. One second to go and that one through the slot. So what an entertaining first period we had there. It's Vesapampa though finding the early breakthrough. Absolutely, especially in the, in the stretch right there. Chances back and forth, short-handed opportunities for Vesa Pompa right there. Huge saves being made by Sapriks. How many times have we said that this season? It's, I mean, yeah, we've covered this team a couple times so far, but Sapriks is just a pleasure to watch in net right there. Just so, so good positionally, able to make those big saves and perhaps none bigger than that one short-handed. That would have been... Uh, a pretty pretty rough one to handle right there if uh, on your own power play Vesa Pompa gained that two goal lead but they survived that chance they still have I think a bit of power play time of their own carrying over into this second period but again unable to score in that first it's becoming an issue only 36 seconds of time on attack another issue unable to even gain the line against this Vesa Pompa squad and you know it's at this point, it's I feel like we're, we're beating a dead horse. It's, you know, more than ascendancy have to find offense. OK, how will they do that? Tough to say at times. I mean, every time they're facing with seemingly a different defensive strategy, but I like what they did. Martindale, instead of electing to go with that low cycle, tried to, you know, tuck it home on that five hole on the short side. And that was a couple plays just before the penalty. Uh, but yeah, it's we'll see what happens here for Northern ascendancy. Can they get something going on this power play? It carries over from the first period. 1-20 to work with, but they do lose the opening draw. Papa had some shorthanded chances there at the end of the first. They win it back here. Ekin takes a big hit. And they now with 45 seconds to work with here until the back to even strength. Over the line, Martindale drops back to the defender. D to D. Ibiz tried to go down low. Good hit there from Ekin. One timer, second chance. What a stop there by Mr. Osvenskin on a broken play, an extra pass. Not an easy stop to make. No, that 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 shot, initial shot, deflected off a of body, went directly to someone else. One of the hardest plays for a goaltender to adjust to. Mr. Osvenskin right on the money. Dylan on the attack. One timer blocked down. Puck still there, but Duncalia not able to get a piece. Here's the man out of the box. Please. Katenji on the breakaway denied. It's a freaks again. What a save. Said he has been phenomenal this season. Here's Fofa Toflin, though, after breaking it up. He's down low in the corner. Back to the point. Ibis. Puck intercepted by Ek, and he's having trouble, but he does recover. Lucky break there for the captain. Gets it back here again. Finds Zobi shot on. Paddled away by Spreaks. Again, still in possession here. Second goes for the kick to skate wraparound. Just not able to regain possession. This one goes all the way down. Played by Allsvenskin out to the left. And a little bit of space here, perhaps. Or Katenji looking to cut in. Again, just too much traffic there in the middle. Ibis Sparkle Romberg doing a good job. Shutting things down. Space here. Opportunity. Big stop by Allsvenskin. Another chance on the doorstep. Fighting for it and covers. Who needs to look at the puck? Perhaps, yeah, I mean, at that point, I mean... Why, why not? He get, turns horizontal in his crease. Uh, probably not doing, but is able to find it between his legs. Gets the cover, though. Northern Ascendancy might not be done. They cannot win that loose puck battle, though. And it's Vesa Pompa back on the attack. A dual tending duel on the docket here for this one. It's Northern Ascendancy back in possession. Trying to cut through here. Junkelia feeds it in front. Just couldn't find its intended target. Bopa Toflin now. Circling around. Pass broken up. Duncalia has it once more. Again, tremendous pressure from the Vesa Pompa defense. Finally turned over, and indeed it will be. Northern Sendency back in possession here. The big pinch in. Marco Rambe not able to get that one through. Recovered by Fopa Tolfin again. And Northern Ascendancy all over them, just not able to complete a play. Here's Ekin with speed. Knocked loose at the last moment. Ibids. Not looking at a place in the elite division to say the least. Again, having played the last few years in the light, that one off the legs. Vesa Pompa will end up getting it back here. That one poked loose. BB back in control. Seven and a half to go. Risky pass there, perhaps. An errant pass there, but hey, at the very least. 
More time off the clock. Well, Svenskin's going to be forced to cover here, though. Some mistakes. Northern Ascendancy, a great chance. Maybe make something yeah. happen here. Pretty much the roughest bounce that you could get off one of those errant passes right there, but a pass that you can't really afford to make. We'll see if Northern Ascendancy is able to capitalize. Off, up, off the goers! Off the draw! Sim calls it as he sees it. Too many mistakes from Vesa Pampa, and we have a tie game. Great job uh, from Fopa Toflin there, just taking that short side shot, which have a propensity to find their way in this year. Definitely, sometimes more often than not, as he uh, sort of picks the corner. Uh, uh, Mr. Allsvenskan does get a piece of it on the blocker, but it finds its way under his arm into the back of the net. And again, sometimes this the tiniest mistake and the tiniest of bounces can lead to a goal. It happens right there. Northern Ascendancy back in it, tied at one. Love to see it, Sim. Competitive game between two rivals. Under six minutes to play, and again, interesting to see uh, Vesta Pompa right now. The passing just not on the mark. Maybe looking to catch the defense off guard. Maybe it's intentional. Who, the, who knows? 5D chess. It certainly didn't pay out a minute ago, though. See who finds that next breakthrough goal. Space here for Hockey Johannes. Second drives the net, and the puck stays out. Popa Toflin scoring a minute to go. Great wheeling pass to Tunkelia. The shot and a stop by Alspenskin. Where was this dynamic offense before? Martindale down low. Tried to feed it in. It's off the legs there of Alspenskin. Wow, and Martindale just I mean, ran Ekin with the over. bounce there. It can't be intentional, <laughs> right? With <laughs> these passes being off the mark. Another one. I, what is happening? Are we being trolled? I'm not too sure, but maybe they're just trolling themselves a little bit. They're wondering why aren't these passes connecting. Sometimes it just seems to happen like that. You're aiming one way and it doesn't seem to listen to you, or perhaps you just move that stick a bit too quickly, though. Here's Martindale with space. Good hit there at the last moment from Sebi Larson. Six seconds here. One more chance, perhaps. Ekin has the puck. Stepping in across. Broken up at the last moment. That will bring us to the end of the second period. Vesa Papa and Northern Ascendancy, the Mini Classico, living up to the hype so far, these two teams neck and neck. Yeah, and you know, Northern Ascendancy looking stronger and stronger as this game goes on, and Vesa Pampa seeming to uh, compound their mistakes with uh, more mistakes there, as you kind of saw them perhaps getting a bit frustrated with themselves uh, bouncing there, and I saw Ekin doing doing the stick chop there with the pucks loose, that's uh, always a sign of uh, perhaps a little bit of aggravation. Uh, coming out from uh, the captain there of Vesa Pampa, but Northern Ascendancy capitalizing on that mistake, and we mentioned it in other matchups. Volpatofla not looking out of place on, on defense. I think he's looking at his best here on the wing. I mean, we just think back to them entering the zone, that spinorama saucer pass across the ice to Tom Kelly, a timed at the line to, to, to be an onside play. That combined with his goal, Paul Patolflin here, you know, really on offense, helping this Northern Ascendancy team find their groove. And if Vesa Pampa continues to struggle with their own, with the puck on their breakout, they could really see themselves in a hole here against this Northern Ascendancy team. They're going to have to clean some things up here. So the third period just about ready to begin. Again, the first game of two between these two clubs. Again, potential playoff implications as they both approach the midway point of this 30 game season. You see the records on screen now for what they've done so far. Space here, Popa Toflin splits the D. Can't get that shot off though. What a presence he's been in this lineup. I know uh, he was feeling uh, a little bit deflated by the idea of playing forward again. Just not something he was really looking to do as another pass off the mark for Vesa Pampa. But I mean, Popa Toflin might be the most dynamic forward option that they have. Passing here for Vesa Papa. Back in the zone. Good interception again. Popa Popa everywhere right now. Northern Ascendancy. Vesa Papa again. Gain the zone. Drop back to Hockey Johannes, whose slap shot was off the legs of a defender. Dish is over, and then just Bash just not able to find its way through. Just mistimed at the line. So, Sin just seems like a matter of time until someone finds a breakthrough. 
Yeah, and the way this is kind of trending, it's seeming like it might be Northern Ascendancy. And as this uh, game continues, Volpa Tolflin just being more and more of a presence that uh, a defender who blocked that shot that you uh, mentioned. Oh, that was Volpa Tolflin. I mean, yeah, he's, he's obviously a solid defender, but like we mentioned with Antonio Mannon moving, moving to forward, if he combines that defensive ability with offense, they've really got something special. Yeah, we find Zach and back to the point. Great block there by Martindale. Puck knocked loose, but held in Vessel Pop with a chance. Backhand block, loose puck. And Northern Ascendancy will settle it down, but Martindale, Martindale's pass is off the mark. It'll go for icing with 12.52 remaining. Huge chance here for Vesa Pampa. Get themselves a faceoff win, establish an attack, and try to get that advantage back here. Underrated as well. Vesa Pampa again. Sebi Larson on that right hand side making his debut today. And Holman had played every single game for Vesa Pampa in that spot all season long. Here's Ekin one on one with Ibiz. Makes the move and just wide on the far side. Great attempt there. Vopa Tofla nearly. Able to walk his way past Sebi Larson, not quite. Pompa back in control for the moment. Good job there by Sparker Rombrai, but he gets walked on this occasion. Defense able to help him out a little bit, though. And these two teams just stifling one another here. Not able to find the space that they need. Back half of the third period here. That pass off the mark. Couldn't uh, find it to the target through the traffic. Stephy Larson has it now. Good feed up to Ekin with a bit of space. Threw it on net. Maybe with a pass more than anything. Or a very, very quick shot. But here's Popa Tolflin down the other way. Hockey Johannes says no. Yeah, if you're a defenseman, if you're going to be aggressive, make sure like that it's at the blue line before the two-on-one gets established in your own zone. Great timing right there from Hockey Johannes and a great stick to prevent that two-on-one from developing. That was Fulpatolflin with Tonkelia. That could have been dangerous. And see here now Fulpatolflin in the attacking zone. Tried to go back to that short side post. Martindale has it now. Didn't see what build he was using today. Hope he switched off that sniper or not. Cycles down low. Up by looking around, and the pass goes all the way back down. Five and a half minutes to go. They try the quick out. What a break there. It's going to be offside, though. Well, Tilfo not able to tow the line. I mean, Sam, we saw the back and forth action here. We've seen a lot more broken plays as this game has gone on. It's interesting to see who's going to find the breakthrough here. Yeah, and the bounces are kind of, you know, picking up. And as the game progresses, they get more and more dangerous uh, just with the locations of them happening right there again. Vesa Pampa. That one blocked down in front. Second chance poked away. Again, it's hockey. Johannes, what a great game he's had defensively. Six points in eight games this season, but clearly a defensive threat as well. Here, once more. Popa Toflin trying to weave his way through. Sebi Larson. But more than he can handle on that attempt. He gets the puck back now and over the blue line. Way too much traffic in the middle, but he recovers. Still, it's Sebi Larson. That pass off the mark. Held in by Johannes. Back in. Order Katenji the shot. Again, Supreek's picture. Perfect positioning on that one. Mm -hmm. Even came out a bit to challenge. We've seen that from Supreek's coming out a bit. You know, kind of aggressive in that crease. A lot of goalies like to stand back there, but he'll come up to that top of that blue paint very frequently. And good uh, good decision making right there, cutting off that angle. Opa oh, Toflin gets the pass, break away, passes back. What a block! Incredible pass, but an even better block from Hockey Johannes. Vesa Papa trying to turn defense into offense. Loose puck. Knocked out by Fopa Toflin once more. Over the line though, Hockey Johannes all over. Who's gonna win this one-on-one -on -one battle? That shot doesn't find its way through. Martindale, the captain, dishes down low to Kelly back to the point. Loose puck never found its way through. Huge hit there. Fopa Toflin back on his feet after getting rocked. Final 20 seconds of regulation. Big interception here by Ibiz. He's knocked off though. By the center, Zobi, who has the lone goal for Vesa Pampa. Mistimed at the line. Who else would it be? Fopa Toflin dishes to the corner. Not able to pick it up with Tunkelia. One more rush. Knocked loose. Here's Ekin, the captain. Knocked off the puck at the last moment. And both teams will earn a very valuable point here in this one. We go to overtime to decide who gets that extra point.
Yeah, and I, I know that Northern Ascendancy only has that one gold marker here and perhaps a bit snake picking, but I, I, I gotta say they've looked more threatening on that offensive side and they're they're looking much more threatening being able to turn defense into offense as well. And, you know, a lot of credit has to go to Fall Patel Fund, who we've mentioned it so many times. He is all over the place, forcing turnovers, getting that possession, leading the rush back the other way, uh, you know, making those those also oh so important passes across the line to you know gain gain that zone that being said Vesa Bompo the advantage in shots the advantage of time on attack however the score is still 1-1 here as we head to overtime and could go either way the goaltenders as well can't really count them out they've done a tremendous job huge saves made at both ends and I this this is a tough one to call you're not too sure which way it's gonna go but man is it exciting Uh, I believe my partner is having mic issues or yep, is yep, muted again. No, we're okay. good. We're good. We're good. We're good. You know, you do what you got to do. It's interesting. It's interesting. Sometimes you look for that little icon and you're like, oh, am I still muted? It doesn't look like it. And then, oh, hey, turns out that you are. It is what it is. You have to conserve the voice here for an overtime like this that could end in seconds. Mr. Ospenskant says no on that one as well just to steal a line. It's been a horrible influence from the NBC broadcast coverage of uh, the New York Islanders and the Boston Bruins. I've heard Varlamov says no about a thousand times, and now it's, uh, it's, it's just it's awful. We move on, though. An offside call here with 17.34 remaining in this first overtime. Will it be the first overtime of many? God. God, I hope not. <laughs> Let's hope we can get a winner here. In this one, that five overtime season opener still haunting my dreams. But with the chances these two teams are getting, it's tough to imagine. But then again, we've had about a thousand passes like that where it's just like, huh, what's going on with these two teams? Playing it back and just being off the mark. That's the Pampa back in possession. Zobi, the lone goal scorer, dished it in front. Marco Rambai gets rid of that one. Chance here, Tunkalia. Dishes in front, no dice. Gets it back on the half wall, tried to throw it on second chance, loose puck, and Martindale just couldn't pick the corner. Sharp shits that he is not. Tunkelia's shot doesn't go. A glove save by Mr. Allspensky. Yeah, huge save right there. I mean, I love the patience coming out from Martindale, but missing it wide from that location, that that's a tough one to kind of swallow right there, but. You know, good job by Mr. Allspence on staying with him, not kind of cheating on any possible pass right there because, you know, had that hit the net, could have gone in as uh, um, an errant pass back into their own end. Vesa Pompa, we've seen that a few times. Maybe they're just baiting out that slap pass. Here's Ekin, back to the point. D to D, one-timer and a kick stop by Sapriks. Sovi recovers, tried to feed it in front, no dice. We might have to place a prediction in Chad, an over-under of 20 of those errant passes. Fine sides as Martindale had a chance to maybe tap that one in. <laughs> Interesting reaction from you there, Sin, on that one. Yeah, the goalie just kind of slid out of the crease after the whistle. Not too sure what that was about. But, you know, it happens. Keeps you on your toes, you know. Never know when a wild goalie might attack. Remember the old days of being able to hit the right stick and punch somebody as a goalie because Tim Thomas did it once, but it never worked. It, like, never reacted to the player as... So Preeks keeps that one out. We'll go down for icing here beyond the halfway point of the overtime. Let's just say and erase some of that Bruins bite. As Tim, Tim Thomas did it once. There's a few more times than that. Come on now. Hey, he was a bit feisty. <laughs> that one poked back to the points. Shot on, nearly deflected there. Again, just too much traffic. Northern Ascendancy, the defense has been pretty solid today. Still again, just that one goal. Shit to flex, and I thought we had a winner there. Mr. Osvenskin, what a save to keep that one out. Tremendous opportunity here in overtime. Thrown across, Tunkelia just couldn't get a piece of it. It's played back out to the neutral zone now with Ibiz handing it off to the center. He gets it back, he'll dump it in. In case anyone wanted those NA dump and chases, apparently you watched the wrong series. That's a pump. Back in over the line, nowhere to go. Big feed, here's Tunkelia. He has a bit of space, steps in, loose puck kept out. Mr. Ralph Svenskin. 
An interesting challenge there from his own defenseman, Hockey Johannes, keeping him on his toes. That's a papa. Stop passing backwards because you're playing with fire. Both teams are. Here's Martindale. Could not say this one hasn't been entertaining. Held up at the line there. Spocker Rombard, not able to get a piece of that one. Hit there by Ibiz. Good job to knock it loose. Big spin pass by Tunkelia. No icing here, but the puck in the zone. Sebby Larson stepping in. Sebby Larson in front. Great chance for Zovi. But Saprik says no. Sebby Larson hasn't done it too often, but when he leads that rusher or takes it in the zone on his own, that was some nice stick work right there to create some space. Almost fed Zovi there in tight on Sapriks, and that could have been the game winner. One timer blocked down again. Sebby Larson not able to get that one through. They try the quick out. Martindale has a bit of space. Can he make the play? Pass across, and it's off the pad of Mr. Allsvenskin. What a game between these two. And we'll see a penalty here. Northern ascendancy to the power play. It's going to be a charging call against Katenji there, the left wing for Vesa Pampa. Yeah, it's tough to disagree with that one. Great opportunity for Northern ascendancy. Huge. They're only 10% on the power play so far this season, which is good enough for 12th, but that kind of goes hand in hand with a rough offense. Let's see if they can capitalize. Zybez tried to go to his captain. He's down and out. He's injured right now. Four on four hockey for the moment as he gets back to his feet. Martindale drops back for Fofa Toplin. One timer doesn't go. Great chance for Sparka Ronberg, though. Here's another chance. Martindale stripped of the puck by Sebby Larson. Send it all the way down. Be down to about a minute and a half on the power play. Extra time, by the way. It's a slow final. Two minutes in OT. So a long way to go in this kill for Vesa Pompa. Turnover there. They got away with one, and Sebi Larson will send that one all the way down as well. Yeah, I mean, that's it's pr pretty much the worst. I had never a good time to take a penalty in overtime, but in those last couple minutes, I mean, it just feels like you're on it forever with the real time. Well, Patoflin up at the point. Over one timer, kick stop, loose puck, still up for grabs. Around the back of the net now. Dunkelia back to the point. Ibiz holds. Pass off the mark, Sebi Larson. D to D pass, good out here. Eckett looks to carry into the zone. Tried to throw one on, took a double team hit. Sebi Larson stepping in, couldn't pick the corner. Great chance, but they're caught out here. Can Northern Ascendancy take advantage? They cannot. The pass from Sparka Romberg off the mark. Good pressure there, though, by Martindale to keep it alive. Thrown at the point and a big stop again by Mr. Allsvenskin. 15 seconds to go. Ekin has it now. He can't clear it all the way down. Bopa Toflik. Brings it over the blue line. Spin pass. Chance here. Down low. Spin again, and it's in! Off the legs of the defender. Fafa Toflin makes it happen off the force. And Northern Ascendancy will walk away with the win in overtime. I couldn't tell if that went off the defender's legs or perhaps the goalie's pad as that was an in tight opportunity. We'll get another look at it. The, the spinorama. It's, again, tough to see, but it, it's right through the crease, and it hits off something, finds its way in. The Spinorama pass looks a bit funky in slow motion, but it finds its way to the back of the net with some of the weird passes going on. Why not have the game end on a weird pass that finds its way to the back of the net? Northern Ascendancy pick up two huge, huge points in this one. Uh, these these are points we can't overstate anymore. They desperately needed these. They improved to five, six, and two on the season. While well, Vespampa getting a point in this one now, five, two, and two on the season. But you know, it's well, this one. Do Vespampa a few careless mistakes with the puck in their own end created that first goal, which led to this overtime situation. Bad penalty to take led to Northern Ascendancy getting all that time and attack, and you know, eventually that game-winning goal. And a great job from Northern Ascendancy, finding, you know, a bit of what they needed here, getting the goaltending from Sapriks that they've gotten pretty much all year. And this time, enough goal support to get him that W as well. I mean, certainly the type of goal that could turn their season around. I mean, at the end of the day, you get the goals anyway you're going to get them. I mean, Sin, that was a phenomenal performance from both goaltenders and almost yeah. felt like it was going to be that type of goal that ended up being the winner. A bit of a fluky goal as we get another look at it here.
The no look around the back pass that Goalie indeed pad. found its way through the defender and hit the far skate of Mr. Osvenskin to go in. That is a heartbreaking loss for Vesta Pampa. However, they had their chances. Mm-hmm. They didn't take advantage of them. That's just how it goes eventually. I mean, if, you know, someone's going to find a winner, whether it's off of a deserved goal or not. Yeah, I mean, again, no, no real shortage of chances for Vesa Papa. There, it's just Sapriks. We, we, you remember those two he saves from cheeks. way earlier? What? Yeah, he ain't, he ain't cheeks. cheeks. <laughs> those, those, those two <laughs> saves from way earlier when he, you know, made those kind of split sprawling saves getting across. I mean, those were huge, and they, they stood up. And one of the, if one of those two goals goes in, we're not even talking about overtime. We're talking about Northern Ascendancy struggling to score, struggling to get a win. However, they pick up the win here again, not quite getting the goal support that they want. That perhaps would be comfortable for Sapriks, but again, nonetheless, enormous W for them. One step closer to 500, one step closer to being back on the road towards those playoffs. Northern Ascendancy, by the way, with a game at hand are just one point behind Yippie Voskala. Didn't think I'd be saying that this season. We will be back after a brief word from our sponsors for your second game of the series, our fourth and final of this broadcast. Don't go anywhere. Wilhelm vie nakkikioskille kotikatsomossa. Wilhelm vie nakkikioskille kotikatsomossa. And we are back. So, Sin, again, to our friends at Kovalon, Alakritsi, and Via Play. thank you for joining us for this season. But to our friends at Wilhelm, who are back for their second season, I mean, a new product known as the Devil Sauce. I'd call that pass from Fopatof on the Devil Sauce because that had no <laughs> business going in. That was an evil, evil goal to win the day. Again, though, it is Northern Ascendancy walking away with both points there. Vesa Pampa, a crucial point as well as, again, we are approaching the midway point of the season for the majority of the teams this week. And as we continue to see everything play out, there is still a long, long way to go. I mean, outside of saying for sure that we'll see Philadelphia and Havu in the playoffs, which is essentially a given. Everyone else, I mean, I'm going to say even a fairy instead at this point. I mean, they've had, they still got their work cut out for them. They'll probably make it. But at the end of the day, fairy instead, H Reds, you got to be careful. There's competition mm-hmm. all throughout the board here. It's one of the most competitive seasons, Sin, that I think we've seen yet. Yeah. I mean, you know, big. A lot of a lot of that to do with some of the massive roster changes we've seen. I mean, just uh, the most lineup changes that we've seen throughout any season. We called it the roster apocalypse. It absolutely is so. And you know, when we're talking about Atres, yeah, we could have said, "Oh, here's you know, completely a big three, But Atres dropping those two those two games to Kova. I mean, obviously took me by surprise. I didn't it didn't even register in my brain that that's what I saw. But we talked about Kova, a team looking to get back in. That could be the start of their way back into the playoffs. But speaking of playoffs, two teams here wanting to get back into a Northern Ascendancy, a huge game one victory there in overtime to start those stepping stones back in. Vesa Pampa got some things to clean up, namely those passes back into their own end, which honestly at one point almost went in a Mr. All Svenska, and that was Hockey Johannes uh, sending it back to his goaltender direction to the corner. Back to Northern Ascendancy, but one of the best chances of the game came from his own defender. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that um, was a great chance. Yeah, Hockey Johanna said a pass that almost went in, then a pass goes in. I think passing might be something to clean up for both of this te- for, for both of these teams as well as you can see uh, what we the matchups we've uh, will be having uh, tomorrow actually on Thursday. Habu Gaming Tunnel Vision Rusty Blades taking on Goons. Habu going to look to bounce back after a rough two uh, zero against or o two I you we could say against Philadelphia and Rusty Blades Goons two teams. Uh, with playoff aspirations, perhaps with Rusty Blades not really uh, in that uh, in that location quite yet. But Goons, oh. great job stepping into from pro to elite this season. Absolutely, we predicted them to be a playoff team this year. Tunnel Vision and Rusty Blades currently at the bottom of the standings. Tunnel Vision recently promoted. Rusty Blades, of course, the former Roots Gaming last year. They were a playoff team, but they underwent a lot of roster changes. Their season's not yet done. They have plenty of time to battle back. 
as do Vesa Pompa here in the white jerseys. Picked up a point, losing in overtime to Northern Ascendancy in that first game. Let's see how game two plays out. Second chance, pass across again. Toby not able to get that through. He scored the lone goal. Sent him in there as he strips the puck away. Not able to make that cut into the middle, though. Again, we, we said that's in a few times. Like, Vesta Pompa, especially in that first period, they had some great chances to take, you know, a couple of extra shots. They elected to pass the extra time, so I'm intrigued to see if they're a bit more willing to try to throw the puck on. A lot of block shots, though, for both sides in that first game. Ekin has it now, dishes back to the point to Johannes. Again, back down low to the captain. Sebi Larson has it now. Sneaky pass to Ekin. Off the pads, kicks back out to the defenders. Sebi. Back there, Loak in the wraparound bid. Not exactly what he was looking for there. So a good early chance for Vesa Papa. And again, this time to the line, Tenkelia, uh, a little bit, a little bit too antsy to get the second game going. Yeah, just a little bit. And we saw a play earlier that uh, they tried a, a cross corner dump, which again we don't see a whole lot of in the Euro scene. But sometimes it can really take a team off guards. They were just unfortunately offside on that play. So Tenkelia had to peel back on that one. As we see an offsides coming through, as the kind of the, uh, the typical neutral zone battle to start this one off. Less typical as uh, the seasons have gone on. We do see a lot more teams starting off quickly, as we saw earlier from Philadelphia. But these two teams, you know, one with a more defensive approach, not wanting to uh, give up an early marker. Beckham's pass off the mark. He is just not allowed to pass to Sebi Larson. They've established this. Kenji's pass not able to go through. All the way down, no icing on the play. So Sebi Larson will corral it. Look to lead the breakout back down the other way. Aki Johannes. Pass to Katenji. Trying to fend off a lot of pressure. Dobi to Akin. Katenji's there. Just wouldn't. Put that shot on net. Good movement. That one blocked down in front once more. Here's Fopa Toflin. Good movement here. Chance. Shot. Kicked away. Second chance blocked. Third opportunity stopped again. Aki Johannes, the composure in the blue paint, top notch. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Um, great save right there from Mr. Osvenskan, but a really good job uh, from Sebi Larson and be in the face of the shooter, not allowing Fopatolfin to get that one timer off. One block. Fopatolfin was fighting for it. Sebi Larson again, a great job. Stretch pass intercepted. Fopatolfin with a bit of space. What can he do? Spins, knocked loose though. Last moment. Good recovery by the defense. Here's Haki Johannes with a lot of speed. But the Sibelius strides out there. Back to net, banked off. They tried the quick out. It's on net and paddled away, I do believe. So Kelly recovers, finds Martindale, who had it blocked at the last moment. And Kelly once more. Down low, good movement. Wired back in front, and they score! What a feed from Martindale and an expertly timed finish from Tonkelia. Northern Ascendancy strike first. Yeah, it was the second opportunity. Couldn't get that first shot off, but the pass cannot be understated. How good that was. The spin to create the angle there. The forehand opportunity gets blocked, I believe. He goes on the backhand, sneaks it by Mr. Allsvenskan, and Northern Ascendancy maybe figuring their offense out. They get on the board early here against their rivals in Vesa Pampa. Fantastic stuff there for Northern Ascendancy. That is now three unanswered goals dating back to that first game. The pressure on Vesa Pompa right now to get that offense going again. You know, 20 goals for for both of these teams entering play, but Vesa Pompa, again, we talked about the second fewest shots registered heading into action today. You can tell, I mean, it's definitely an effort to get the pucks on net. What a chance for Zovi. He just couldn't sweep that one. Pass to breaks. Great opportunity to listen. Yeah, wow, talking about pucks on net. That one came out of nowhere. Very dangerous there, but Saprix always seems to be in the right place at the right time. Yeah, let's see what Vesa Pomp can do in the attacking zone. Zovi tried that short side. Saprix not moving an inch. Scramble for it on the near post. Intercepted here, though. Fopa Toflin has Tunkelia with him. Can't make the play. Expertly played by Hockey Johannes. That is top-notch defense, and Sin as a fellow deal, I can see, respects it. 
Yeah, absolutely. That's the perfect way to play that. I mean, that's, yeah, that's just great experience there from Hockey Johannes to shut that developing two on one down. He dishes it down low. But then G for Ekin. Waits him out. Tried to go back to the point. Held him by Sebi Larson. Ekin gets it back once more. Back to Sebi. Shot chest wide. That corner was open. Unlucky for the defender. Final 10 seconds here. Good movement. Barker Rombay stepping up into the play. Over for Tunkelia. Knock loose. Two seconds. Shot on. Stopped by Alspenskin at the buzzer. And Northern Ascendancy will take a 1-0 lead into the second. Yeah, almost a deflection play as well. I'm not too sure if Martindale got his stick on it, but he was there reaching out with it. Nonetheless, Mr. Alspenskan makes the save in the dying moments. That would have spelled trouble for Essa Pampa had they gone down by two late in this period and really been the spark that I think that uh, Northern Ascendancy uh, needed. Uh, but unfortunately for them, they didn't go in, but they still have that lead. And, you know, I, I would like to see them still get a, another goal before uh, the possible overtime or before the end of regulation, at least again. They, yeah, they won that first game, but you want to keep building on that success. Get more goals, get more goals. Give some freaks some breathing room back there because he keeps making these huge saves and perhaps some unexpected saves. You look at that time on attack Vesipov has over four minutes. Yeah, only three registered shots, but we mentioned it. More than ascendancy, doing a good job blocking those shots. We'll see if they can turn that into a bit more goal support. And if you're Vesipov, here yeah you're a great defensive team but you can't always keep that puck out of the net you have to score yourself and i do believe their goals for only 20 throughout the course of this season so far that's averaging just 2.5 per game which more often than not at this level is not going to be enough to win uh, all your games so here we go second period just about ready to begin and we will see how this one plays out now as we continue on here, again, our fourth and final game of this broadcast. We thank you very much for joining us. A chance here early on for Eck, and he picks the corner. 51 seconds in, and Vesa Papa have tied it at one. That's absolutely huge. Just kind of a quick bang-bang play right there from Eck. And as you can see, the pass down low, the pass back. He just takes one stride to the left, picks that corner, so freaks. Not a whole lot you can do right there. You're in pretty decent position, but that short side, sometimes the puck just seems to have eyes, and once again, off the blocker, sort of under the arm by the looks of it, and they are uh, right back in as we're going to get another look at that happen. Just a great job by Zuvi with that drop pass. We kind of harped on them at times, the one extra pass, but then... The two goals that they scored so far have come from that one extra pass, but maybe it's just a bit more of choosing your spots to do it. Not much a goalie can do there, like you said, without overcommitting, which makes you susceptible to the pass back across. It's, it's a tough play to make. Chance for Johannes as he was looking for Katenji there on that pass. And man, does Popa Toplin love a spin pass or what, Seth? Yeah, he's done that a couple times in the neutral zone, and both times it's right on the money. I mean, flare or not, it's it works and it looks good. So an offside here, 16:46 to go. Again, Vesa Pompa able to get the tying goal here early on. As Kuhnborg mentioned in the chat, one heck of a celebration for Mekin as well. There we go. Vesa Pompa back in the zone now. Handled well by Sparka Ramba. Here's Fopa Toflin. Chance there on the door. Step pass back across. Martindale covering the point. His pass, though, off the mark. Captain gets it back. Fopa Toflin once more. Here's Martindale. Looking. Intercepted well by Zobi. That's a Pompa going back down the other way now. Over the blue line. Here's Ekin steps in. Slap shot. Rebounds there. But Sapriks recovers well. I like that decision making there, you know, the trailer slowing it down a bit, making making the Northern Tennessee sort of collapse, open up that shooting lane, going for the rebound there. As he knows, sometimes uh, Supreeks plays a bit out of that crease, looking for the easy goal, didn't happen. Face for Zobi again, trying the short side. Supreeks sealing off that post well, though. Could be susceptible to being caught on the wrist shot like he was before, but wraparound bids, maybe not so much. As that one deflects wide, good chance for Tunkalia. The goal scorer for Northern Ascendancy in this one. Good defense on display there by Sparkle Round by one more time. And offside call here with 11-17 left in the second period. 
And Sevi Larson, he's looked good when he's leading that rush. Tries the windmill right there. Just goes off the uh, foot of the defender. I believe that was Ibiz on that uh, screen right-hand side. And uh, offsides leading to it. But what a pass there to Martindale. That one goes through the crease. And Kalia trying to hold on to it through double-team coverage. He can't. Kenji has it now. Dishes off for Reckon. Speed along the half wall. Back to the point. D to D. That one blocked down in front. Handled well by Sparker Romberg one more time. Great patience, quick out. It's playable, Fopa Toflin got a piece of it to cancel the icing. But Sebe Larson was able to shut him down. Johannes right there as well. It's been a great defensive display. Really all four defenders in this match, a great team defense across the board. Ekin on the off wing, hold it, look it. Pass in front, intercepted. Two on one, perhaps developing here. Here's Fofa Toflin, kicks it to his tape. Shot down by Sebi Larson again. I mean, Professor Pompa right now. Johannes, Sebi Larson, and Holman on defense as well. You got three very good options, to say the least. Sebi Larson fires one on, and he has been so unlucky to not get a goal so far here tonight. Some well placed shots. Great job there by Tekelia to just brute force his way through. Bopa Toflin not able to find the pass. Four and a half to go now. Denji over the line. Oh, he did. Has it knocked loose. Bopa Toflin able to hold on to it. Gets it right back. Pass over to Martindale. Looking. Pass shot and a big stop by Mr. Osvenskin. Great positioning once more. Yeah, great positioning right there. Fopa Toflin perhaps a bit unfortunate. Getting that backhand animation when perhaps the, uh, the forehand would have... Uh, gotten a better chance of going in the back of the net, but they get the face off there. <laughs> Stop again by Mr. Ospenskin off that one-timer from the point. Aki Johannes gets it over the line. Kostenji on the off wing. Down low in the corner. Finds Ekin. Looking, waiting. Kostenji circles back. Try to find Ekin down low and does. Quick pass. Oof, Johannes Look to pull the trigger there. They're still in possession. What an attempt from Zobi. That would have been one of the goals of the year. Absolutely. The toe drag then goes to the backhand right there. But Saprix doesn't cheat off that pot one, one bit. Had he, that could have snuck in on that short side. That was pretty. Fantastic play there. Down low in the corner, fighting for it. Denji has it one more time. Knocked loose. Six seconds now to play. Poked away. Tunkelia. Popa Toflin trying to join in on the rush. Sebi Larson. How is this your first game of the season, sir? I know if I'm, if I'm more familiar with the situation, if I'm correct here, it's more scheduling uh, than anything as to why we don't see Sebi Larson play more often. Just his availability. My goodness. What a performance here. I would even argue it's probably not fair to let him play so often the way he's just shutting down rush after rush after rush at the perfect time too. Him and Aki Johannes, uh, it's it's could just it can't be you know overstated just how good they've been at shutting down these possible rush situations. Whether it be Fopa Toflin trying to bring it in or Tongelia, whether it be Sebi Larson on the right side or the left side, same thing with Aki Johannes. We've seen them break it up from either side of the ice, and that's creating a big chances for Vesa Papa to get that puck back in their end which is leading to that extended time on attack we've see we see them having however they need to be able to translate a, a bit more of that into those goals as you know you mentioned it Sebi Larson perhaps a bit unfortunate on some of those shots that he've taken they've been relatively well placed besides missing the net and they've been really sneakily powerful like it doesn't look like he's gonna have you know a, a strong shot going in and then it comes at that net with such speed just if he can get that precision up there, I mean, he's going to score a goal. Again, it would have been a very uh, pretty play there for Zobi as well. At the end, you know, toe drag into the spin. But, hey, I would call it a potential goal of the year if it works. If it doesn't work, well, it's forgotten by the end of this game. Third period, um, tied one apiece. Went to overtime in the first game as well with the scoreline. And 2-1, to one, of course, Northern Ascendancy getting the win off of a, a Fopa Toflin pass. Best way to describe it is we have an offside call here early on. Sin, what's it going to take for these two teams to find this breakthrough? Um, an errant pass? 
Am, am I doing? Am I doing that right? No, I mean I think yeah, it's <laughs> at some point they're, they, they're both looking good. They're both getting all these chances. I mean, maybe it takes a goalie to overcommit, although it's looking like that's not super likely. But we'll see what happens. Who's ready to kind of simplify and just take a shot? MG has it. Down low, Ekin, looking, wrap around, bid, and a shovel chance there for Zobi. Another chance over to Ekin, blocked down. Still in possession of Vesapampa. Sebi Larson, slot shot scores! We said he was unlucky, he finally finds the breakthrough, a phenomenal season debut, and he has a goal to show for it. Sebi Larson. Yeah, just absolute howitzer of a shot, and perhaps you're not expecting it to be that hard once again, the pass back. Just kind of finds that lane, and it was the poke, I think, from Fopa Toflen that kind of opened up his body, preventing the shot block there. What a shot, just that quick wind-up, but that came so hard. Off the post, I think, and in. I believe we heard that little ding happening. Not a whole lot that Supreeks can do on that one. And Vesa Pompa taking a lead. So it was Northern Ascendancy last time with the two unanswered goals. This time, it's Vesa Pompa, and they have the lead here in this third period. Indeed, Nick. Two unanswered goals for Vesa Pampa, striking early in each of the last two periods. Northern Ascendancy, of course, we've talked about the goal scoring struggles. Time to put those fear to bed as, you know, I've, I've called Supreek's magic before. And, uh, hey, he's, he's not bound by your mythical human restraints, such as a steel net. Face off here for Vesa Pampa. If you can't laugh about stuff like that happening in this game, then hey, what can you laugh at? They win it back here. Katenji tried to snipe. Loose pocket, it's in! What a secondary chance. Vesa Papa, three unanswered goals. As Katenji gets involved in the fun, all three forwards with a goal over the course of the two games here. Sin, that might be the dagger. That just might be, I mean, we talked about it, perhaps just throw the puck on net. They do there. It's the follow-up opportunity where Supreeks goes to hug the post, although, you know, not down in that butterfly and gets that first, although kind of, yeah, it's an interesting animation right there. He sort of stood up to block that shot and then in came the Vesa Pompa forwards, crashed in the net and just were able to get that blue collar grinded out goal. And they have a two-goal lead here. Northern Ascendancy going to have to scramble to get their way back into here. For a team struggling to score, now is your time to prove that you can. You need two goals. I think it was just really unfortunate timing. Like, he hugged the post as the shot came in. I think right there you saw with him maybe going butterfly into the right. He was just trying to time readjusting anyway. I mean, yeah, not a situation where you see Supreeks get caught all that often. He got caught there. Here's Tungkelia. Takes the huge hit from Sebi Larson, but wins it back. Pass in front. Nobody home. Indeed, 11 minutes now for Northern Ascendancy to get back into this one. Otherwise, it'll be a 1-1 split between these two teams with technically Vesa Pompa taking three points away from it. Sebi Larson with a good look there. Around the back. Toby has it here. Looking at him. And that was a huge poke check. He had an open net to shoot at. Dunkelia, self sauce throws it on, rebound. Who else? Sebi Larson there to take it away. Zekin takes the hit here. Poked away, Popa Toflin looking. Searching for an option. Goes to Ibis. Back down low, good passing. Knocked out, second chance in the block. Stop. Dunkelia denied by Mr. Alsvenskin. Chance down the other way. Here's Katenji with the move. Not able to get around the fence. Job by Sparkle Romberg. He has it again. Gets to the traffic. Six and a half minutes now. Down by two. From Kelia. Martindale. Still fighting for it. Oh, Svenskin able to find it. Through the forest of uh, skate blades there. We have a cover. Yeah, the big body of Martindale there. Just creating havoc in the front of the net. Almost kind of getting another shot on there. As he elected to try to pass it back first. And it bounced back to him. Fanned on the shot, and then it was Mr. Alsvenskan covering that up, and time is ticking away here. Here's Ekin with space. Protects well. Around the back, takes the hit, still fighting for it. Well, there in front of goal. Northern Ascendancy. Back in the zone. Popatoflin saw a lane. Disappeared just as fast. Sebi Larson. What a performance. He draws the trip. 
And Sin, that'll likely do it for Northern Ascendancy here. Best of Pompa to the power play. Uh, we did mention Northern Ascendancy taking a lot of penalties. They've had pretty good discipline tonight, but ill-timed penalty there for Ibis. Yeah, fortunately for them, it won't be in the real-time last minute, but once this penalty is killed, they'll have just about that last minute. So if they allow a goal here, that will, in fact, be the dagger, I think. But Northern Ascendancy, they still have a chance. See what they can do. Press of Drock, and she has it. Sophie Savvy, good movement here. Knock loose in the moment by Sparka. Cycle movement from Vesa Papa, killing time in the meantime. Johannes is shot at a big kick save. Supreek's going the wrong way. Here's a chance shorthanded, perhaps. Popa Toflin needs to make something happen. He can't. Wins it back, though. Looking, looking. One-timer blocked down. Swatted away. Kept in. Puck in the corner. Sebi Larson has it. 145 remaining. 20 seconds to go on the kill. Ron Berg wins it. They know they need a shorty here. Bofa Toflin waiting for help. Looking. Dishes down low. Two players there. Big hit by Tunkalia. But back to five on five. One timer deflected. Tunkalia has his second of the game. And don't go anywhere yet, folks. This one might not be over. We're in store for an interesting final 55 seconds. Yeah, absolutely huge job right there. Back on the point, that's Sparka Romberg taking that shot, and that's Tom Kelly getting his stick on it for the deflection. They've had a couple deflection chances before, as that was a, um, a great animation of him kind of tumbling through the net against the goaltender. God, I love this game. And uh, they, they are just down by one goal here. With that real-time last minute, as we mentioned, like if they kill this penalty off, they still have time. Well, they not only killed it off, they got a goal still with about this 55 seconds left. As we're going to get another, a better look at it right here. Just, oh my goodness, it deflected twice, I think, off of the, uh, the defender after he gets the initial reflection, which made it kind of go up high right there. Looks like he was almost deflecting it down, which could have led to Mr. Allsvenskan getting the save, but... Again, you throw that puck on net, good things happen. We saw it earlier for Vesa Pompa to take that two-goal lead. We see it now to, from Northern Tennessee to cut that lead in half. Still that 55.6 seconds of real time remaining. That glitch through the goalie. You're a wizard, Connor. Yeah. <laughs> Space here for Ekin now. Trying to get the dagger goal. Sapriks able to stop him. 45 seconds to work with here. For Northern Ascendancy. Here's Tunkelia. He's on a brace in this one. Has it back. Popatopo Tunkelia denied. The hat trick not meant to be there. Mr. Osvenskin with the stop. He's had to be sharp all evening here for uh, Vesa Pompa. Perhaps no bigger save than that one. Vesa Pompa, a great lineage of top notch time. goaltenders. Huge hit there. Here's Ekin. Only one man to stop him. It's Ibiz. That one thrown across. Toby has it down low, intercepted. 25 to go. Another rush here for Northern Ascendancy. We're up 1 0, now down 3 2. Popatofan across, just couldn't get all that one was Martindale. Popatofan again, puck in front, tries to wheel it home, and all Svenskin says no. Might we see Sapriks to the bench with 12 seconds here? We don't. Interesting call. I think that would have been the time to do it. Big time yeah. face off here for Martindale. He wins it. Shot knocked down. One more chance to get back in the attacking zone. Can they do it? Here's Tunkelia. Four seconds to play. To the point. Shot blocked down. One more chance for Sparka Romberg. It does not go. And Vesa Pompa will hold on. They earn a split technically walking away with the majority of the points. Uh, thanks to losing an overtime. Three points for Vesa Pompa out of four today. Northern Ascendancy with two having won the prior game in overtime. Yeah, so a huge win, huge points for them, but again, leaving some on the table here in the second one and only getting two goals. This time, both of them in regulation, sure, but man, it would have been so sweet for them to get that third one. Not only it's like, hey, okay, we're beating our average. We scored three goals here in regulation. I mean, they're averaging under two goals per game so far this season. That's simply not going to be good enough for Northern Ascendancy. So close to making that happen, as well as forcing that overtime, but not meant to be. Vesa Pampa, as you mentioned, coming out on the better side of things here, but what a matchup that turned out to be. I mean, exciting right up to the end. Great goaltender duels. Great job from both these defensive pairs and, you know, some big goals happening uh, from either side as well. And it's Vesa Pompa taking that next one here. A bit of a scary moment for them at the end, but they hold on and win it in regulation.
So with that, I mean, what a way to end the action here today. A rivalry night on NHL Gamer Philadelphia, of course, taking both games away from Havu. You see one final chance here. Or at least that goal that went in there, actually, after that uh, wheel from Martindale. And, I mean, and they had their chances at the end. Great game between these two as well. I mean, again, that 1-1 one, one split, maybe not exactly what either was looking for, but it is better than uh, losing both games. We'll say that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And if you're Vesa Pop, you got to be feeling pretty good about it. Yeah, you, you did lose that first game. Yeah, you allowed the two unanswered goals. Well, technically three if you carry over into that next game, but you get three points out of four. That That's huge for them. I mean, a team right now in, that, in a playoff position looking to get themselves further up into contention. I mean, they came into today, I believe, only with eight games played, so they're just up to 10 when we've seen – other teams playing 14, 16. So to be where they're at now, 6-2-2 two and two, is a great spot to be in. Again, probably could stand to score a few more goals here and there, but their defense, I mean, it looks amazing. So with that, I mean, again, a lot of different talking points that we could still have in regards to both of these teams. Again, both with playoff aspirations, and I don't think you can necessarily rule them out. Both teams undergoing some changes heading into this season to say the absolute least. And again, with both teams yet to hit the halfway point of the season, you still have that time uh, to continue to try and get your chemistry down. So a uh, very impressive night of action here as you see that poke check that uh, really took away that last moment opportunity here. That one final block by Katenji to deny. So that brings us to the end of the action here today we do thank you all for sticking with us here again not sure if we have an updated look at the most recent results even if we don't of course and there you go we do h reds uh, a big performance today over rusty blades continuing to keep them down towards the relegation spots and again uh, we talked about it sawo uh you know a split series with yippie voskala feriestad getting the job done against tunnel vision currently in the basement of this division and of course i mean h reds as well big talking points bouncing back well from those losses to yeah. kova so again uh sin go ahead no i was just saying they couldn't have been happy about dropping two games to kova only picking up one point out of the possible four when they probably came into that day thinking they were getting three minimum and probably already writing down those four points for themselves so <laughs> just goes to show you None of these teams can be taken lightly in this division. Anything can happen at any time. That's kind of been our mantra today in this broadcast. And I'd say it's lived up to the expectations. Absolutely. So again, NHLGamer.com to follow along with everything going on under the NHL Gamer umbrella. Of course, right here in the Elite Division, our other tiers as well. Of course, we'll be keeping an eye on said tiers as we continue on through Season 12. Always interesting to see who's going to come out on top in our Pro Division to earn promotion up to this league next season. And of course, ongoing as well, our affiliation with Anaheim Ducks Gaming and their current 5K Sixes tournament that's going on. I uh, managed to cover some games for them last night. Sin will be back with them this Sunday as well. Again, the information you need on NHLGamer.com. With that, I think we're out of here for today. Of course, you can follow Sin on Twitter at Sin for the Win Prod, and of course on YouTube at Sin for the Win Productions. You can find me everywhere at Tuki24, of course. Sin, another great day of action, but of course, tomorrow as well. Again, a reminder more games on deck. That broadcast in finish. It'll be Havu Gaming in action once more as they take on the basement-dwelling Tunnel Vision. We'll see if they can battle back and surprise. You never know how it's going to work out. And Rusty Blades as well, again, having their work cut out for them against Goons, who can try, who continue to try and prove our panel of experts correct, who said that they might just be able to make the playoffs this season. Sin and I will be back next week, next Monday. And if I am not mistaken here, Sin, I think we're in store as well uh, for some good games then as well uh, as, yeah, we get to cover. You ready for this, buddy? Mm -hmm. Philadelphia and H-Reds. Yes. That's going to be fantastic. And ZSC Esports and Northern Ascendancy. We can't escape these guys, even if we wanted to, which we don't Absolutely want to. Not. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> 
We're gonna we're gonna watch their hopefully transition into be able to put that puck on the net for Sapriks. They did a much better job this week's matchup than last week's matchup. We'll see if they can keep making those steps back there. And against ZSC, they're gonna want to try to stay in this division, get themselves out of that relegation position. But yeah, A Treads versus Philadelphia. I mean, the battle of the powers. I mean, almost a mirror match with how they both like to play, and that's gonna be a good one. You guys are not gonna want to miss that. Avo Yippie Vaskala fires to Ed Vestapop on Wednesday. Nothing but hits next week. We will see you then. Thank you all for joining us. We'll catch you next time. Minkä päällä lakukastiken maistuu parhaalta? Ei voi tietää, ellei kokeile. Kouvolan lakritsi. Wilhelm vie nakkikioskille kotikatsomossa.